officially live once hello. again everyone check your mic say hello hello hello, hello. hello. oh man no no all right I'm, let me let me cancel this stream we're starting best over no. Don't anyone... yes, yes. Done. best one best best Re restart the clock are you okay. guys glad that you waited yeah all that time all that time for, for that, that. and we're done for that. call it <laughs> That's how you lose cyberpunk people. That is exactly no. how you lose it. Uh, you no, hey, hey, it's been just over two months since we got to stream some cyberpunk red right here for the Sirenscape weekly gameplay. I am so excited to be back in this. Uh, I didn't realize how much I missed it until time started ticking without this game. And I was like, oh my God, that is, it is literally therapy uh, to me. I, I love it. I need this every week. Uh, without it for the past couple months, I have been lost. Um, anyone no. that anyone that's been uh, kind of in the loop, uh, I had a big film gig come up, which was awesome. Uh, plus, we had the holidays, which was great to spend time with family. Um, so we just had some time off. Um, but like I said, I missed it. I'm sure all of you missed it. I missed chat being here. Um, I just like I said, it's been uh, just a big eye opener to me. Just how much I love doing this, and how much it's therapy, and just how much I enjoy playing with with all of you as my players. Um, like I said, rocking this channel with the Sirenscape team and chat and everything. It's just I'm I'm so excited to be back. So I just wanted to say that, get that out of the way. Um, let's get into this. I don't want to uh, get ahead of myself. We will do a recap. We need to do. Uh, a, Quite a bit of a recap, get everyone on the same page before we dive into the current campaign. But before we do that, let's do like we always do. Let's go around the table, everyone introduce yourself, let people know where they can find you online, and introduce your character as well. Ellen, start it off. Oh my gosh, I forgot the stress of being a first cab off the ranks. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been sad without Cyberpunk. Definitely exercised a few demons and uh, added... Uh, probably lost years of my life doing this <laughs> series, but I love it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, and you can find me uh, at Roll to Cast. That's R O L E to Cast with the lovely Phil, who is to either side of me. I forget which side. Um, and we're any winning variety TTRPG podcast. Each season is a different game system. We have started our latest season, which is Starfinder. So heading to. The space, the space, the skies beyond. Um, and it's going to be really, really exciting. But of course, there are eight seasons of content for Roll to Cast. Uh, we just wrapped up Avatar Legends. So there is something for everyone. If you don't believe me, go check it out uh, and then say in the comments, I was wrong, Ellen, I forgive you. Um, and I, like the merciful maiden I am, will give you kisses. Uh, <laughs> So follow Roll to Cast, uh, everything that we do. We've got some really big events uh, coming up. I'm sure uh, Phil will fill you in. Um, and uh, if you are wanting to buy any of the, the dice that I hoard so so well or other RPG gear, Roll to Cast is also affiliates with Chronicle Cards. Um, so head over there and get yourself a, a, a nice um, set of dice. I think I've got one lying around here. One of their sharp sets, very beautiful, but they also make uh, beautiful brushes to paint your minis. So go check that out. Oh, Phil's got one They're right there. Excellent. And um, I am still playing against all odds, <laughs> unless unless this is the session that kills me for real. I am still playing 
Alley Cats, the rocker of your dreams. Nice. Rockette Fox. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am, have always been, and will always be Rockette Fox, your second favorite person. And you can find me in all of the places. If you pretty much look up Rockette Fox, there I will be just staring right back at you. Uh, but in the meantime, I have... A little bit ago, for anyone who may not have caught on, partnered with Cyber Nation Uncensored, so I have a couple hey. shows that I produce over there. Uh, one's one time a month, the other is twice a month. And um, also, we are on the tail end on Friday nights. I'm over on Trooper SJP's pan Trooper SJP's channel, the ability to speak just left me, uh, where we are playing Traveler, Pirates of Drenax, which is uh, a system that is pretty much as old as D&D. Uh, and you can die in the character creation, so that should give you some idea of what that's all about. Um, yeah, yeah, and as far as tonight goes, I will be playing Hades, who is the netrunner of your nightmares. Nice. Phil. Hello, I am Phil. Um, I am also part of Roll to Cast, so I'll just highlight another couple of little things about us. Uh, we've got a Patreon, uh, we've got a Discord, uh, which is a very active, fun community where we talk about all sorts of things from TTRPGs to um, strange technical stuff that, that uh, I don't fully understand, but our <laughs> users love to chat about, server architecture and all that good stuff. We also have a YouTube channel, uh, we've got a live stream, monthly live stream, we're doing two in January because we, we missed December because, you know, family and stuff. We've got a live stream coming up. On Saturday, we're actually going to be revisiting Cyberpunk 2020 and the story of Cassie Glass, which is really, really cool, doing a little epilogue to our 2020 campaign from three years ago. That's going to be really, really fun. Um, uh, so, yeah, if you go to any of our, our, our media, um, you can find links to that stuff below. And we've also got a live show coming up in the Adelaide Fringe. Um, so that's just about a month away, just over a month away. It's a live show at a friendly local uh, game store called The Lost Dice. Uh, so any of our Australian fans, come down to the, the Fringe, or if you're an international person coming to the Fringe, biggest arts festival in the Southern Hemisphere, um, do come check us out. We're doing one show each between the four of us. Different game, uh, different one shot with uh, live music, and we're using uh, Sirenscape to do all of our sound effects uh, live from the desk uh, and then you know lights and everything for full immersion the way we normally do it so yeah tickets are already on sale for old cast live so yeah if you want to come see that please please do uh, i myself you find me on on twitter at scruff s-k-k-r-u-f but tonight i'm playing bud the solo who is standing right behind you it's too late, Robin. <laughs> it's too late. Oh no, you're already dead. <laughs> oh, game over. Uh, all right, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, you already got me. Um, so that's that's it. Uh, I am Brandon Perkins, also known as Dan underscore Brando, and uh, you can find me doing production stuff with uh, Cyber Nation Uncensored hey. as well. I am very happily. Uh, working with uh, the team there and uh, I'm looking forward to this year coming up where I'll be able to do even more things with uh, the team there. It's super excited. Um, and uh, I'm playing Rush, the fixer that's not standing right beside you or behind you, not in any of your dreams, but is probably trying to sell you right now on something really amazing because let's face it, I only sell the best. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so good. They still remember me in 2077. That's what I'm telling you. They, they wear fanny packs with my name on it. That's, that's how famous Rush is right now. Please don't say that, 10. Brandon, because now I'm going to need to make a fanny pack. I know. I was going to say, I think I've seen yeah. Ellen no. rocking that. I, yeah, people have taken screenshots from uh, from 2077. There is actually a fanny pack that says Rush. I saw that. Uh, I saw that. I'm not, I'm not taking credit Amazing. for that. Amazing. Oh, no, absolutely. No, absolutely. Uh, I heard CD Projekt Red <laughs> absolutely put that in because they love our stream and Rush's character th that you've uh, been role playing. It's all about Shout out to it's CD Projekt Red in not chat. a coincidence. Yeah, it's not a coincidence. 
<laughs> right, I saw that too. Well, though. I perfect saw that, then. Yeah, I saw that screenshot. So I that was really cool. names in chat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that on my resume. Nice. Well, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm Rob Mulligan. I'm the game master here, but I'm also the founder of Cybernation Uncensored. Check out Cybernation Uncensored on Twitch, on YouTube. Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere you see social media, you can probably find Cybernation Uncensored. We do all kinds of streams. Uh, we're just about, I think we're currently having about a stream a day, a different live stream each day of the week. Uh, it should be continuing on like that moving forward, as well as having multiple streams a day. Some of the days we have multiple streams, gameplay and different shows, interviews. We have review shows coming, a live cooking segment, um, tarot reading, live gameplay, as well as streamed uh, you know, across the internet, gameplay, just all kinds of content. We've been expanding nonstop for the past couple months, and there's no end in sight. We just keep expanding. Um, we're currently looking for more team members, too. Um, we need a new community manager, um, a new uh production manager uh, we're still looking for more promoters and other things as well so join up cyber nation uncensored on discord and you'll see the casting call for gameplay the uh the team uh, member join uh submission applications and and all that stuff so check it out and uh join up and if if you don't want to join as far as being a streaming partner with us or producer or any of that um, at least join up to check out all the content. Um, as Rockette said and Brandon said, they've teamed up as well as other creators. And we're just putting out uh, so many different streams and videos and things. We'd love to see you there tuning in live. If you can't check out the live, check out YouTube for the VODs. If you're not into the visuals, we're on like 30 plus podcast websites where you can just kind of listen in. So check that out as well. I would love the support. But before you give me any support, our community support, or roll to cast or any of us support make sure you first give some support to sirenscape it's the reason we're here every week it's an amazing tool for your gameplay whether a game master or player uh, you need to check it out it's it's free to sign up and get a free trial uh, once you do that you'll see exactly what we're talking about it's amazing it's a way to add sounds and atmosphere um, whether it's it's ongoing and automatically randomizes or you're triggering different sounds at key moments during gameplay it's just it's awesome. So check it out. Uh, it's what we use every week here. Sometimes I leave it on, you know, just randomizing city sounds. Sometimes we're able to trigger battle and different things. It's just, it's a lot of fun. So check that out. Also, make sure you share this Twitch channel. Let people know we're live. It's been, like I said, a couple months since we've been able to stream and get into this. And we're back. We're officially back. And we would love your support spreading the word. So if you've seen us tweet about it or post on Facebook or share on Discord or anywhere else, Please make sure you retweet that, share that out, let people know we're live. Um, in, in the very least, grab the, the Twitch uh, URL link right now and just share it wherever you have social media pages and uh, help us spread the word. I would love that. And I know Sirenscape would really appreciate that too. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get back uh, to playing some Cyberpunk Red. Uh, we're doing this every week, every Thursday, same place, same time. Uh, we left off in, the, in just at the start of a new campaign called Brainwash lather rinse repeat and um it's kind of a play on words on what's been going on for the the team the past few campaigns um i recommend everyone check out the sirenscape youtube channel and um you know check out all the vod's the past sessions that we've done uh just so many crazy plot twists and npcs and things that this team has been through like i said the last few sessions uh ended up not really happening kind of happened in a brain dance the team ended up uh flatlining and going through hell uh, if, check out the last campaign just to, if you don't want to dive into all the previous campaigns at least watch the one previous to this one to see it's wild yeah everything that it was happened. a lot it was a it lot was if you want to see this ugly crying face <laughs> like like several check weeks in a row <laughs> <laughs> it was so good though. The 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 the, the level of role playing from this cast was just top notch. Just dealing with the the crazy plot twists and rolling with it and making it epic. I mean, just the collaborative aspect to what happened in this this last campaign was just inspiring. I, I'm just I'm sure my own life was real afterwards. So. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but yeah, here we are. Look, the team got through it. Uh, you know, apparently they didn't die. Arasaka was just making a point for the most part. And um, they basically said, look, you know, this was to show you that uh, even under your most reached possibilities and whatever you can think of, uh, it's not going to work out. You can't go against, uh, you know, loyalty of Arasaka or having loyalty to Arasaka and uh, 
you know, basically not carrying out uh, the missions that we give you. Um, but they thank the team for getting through it and, you know, now uh, being part of the Arasaka family. Um, Ali Katz was the only one that remained brainwashed this time through all the resist torture and drugs. Um, she had to still kind of go through it. They had their ceremonial dinner inaugurated into the Arasaka family and then off to their first mission where Rush was given a, a case basically with, uh, I think it was 20,000 eddies in it, um, a passcode to the Inz Inzanaga uh, let me make sure I'm saying that right. The system, uh, yeah, it is a uh, yeah, I said that wrong the first time. <laughs> the, basically the access point, uh, to Makoshi, the, the, the system that's in, in Arasaka building ground zero in night city, Arasaka can't really work, uh, in night city, obviously since fourth corporate war fiasco. Um, so they've got the team, uh, kind of under their thumb now, uh, through this brain dance and brainwashing. They think the whole team's brainwashed, just Ali, like I mentioned. However, the team's playing along. They're kind of in a dangerous situation in bed with Arasaka. But they have to basically go to ground zero, uh, enter the system, and uh, retrieve a file called Nova 3. Um, they basically need to get this Nova 3 onto this uh, disk that they have in the case that Rush has with the money and bring it back to Arasaka. Uh, so they got to Night City. Rush has his McMansion in the exec zone now, uh, kind of pimping out, thanks to Arasaka. But um, some local, like, neighborhood welcoming committee stopped by, seeming a little more skilled than your average neighbor, um, kind of slipping something into Rush's hand, a little golden tour pass to budget arms. A little strange, but they ended up there and ended up in, the, in a back room uh, meeting up with a bunch of Militech operatives. In fact, General Donald Lundy, uh, the, the head of Militech was in there. Well, the, the former head who was leading up the fourth corporate war against Arasaka. Now just kind of uh, the most influential board member on the board of Militech. But as he explained, he's still running things behind the scenes. Some things that just can't be above board with President Kress. He still has a bone to pick with her. Um, he's been watching Rush for some time now. Let me mention Rush has worked his way up as a fixer to rank 10. Hence making big connections like this and kind of pulling the team Crazy. into some epic things. But um, but yeah, he's been watching, real happy with what they did with Leviticus and the whole uh, Boswash Canal and just past things. And now here they are uh, saying, look, we see you're working with Arasaka. We can't imagine this is by choice, but nonetheless, you're with them. Uh, whatever you're here to retrieve or do, bring it to us. We want that. Don't bring it to Arasaka. In fact, we know one of your teammates is brainwashed. We'll help you get her out of that situation. And they had to go in a brain dance one at a time, kind of pulling Allie into kind of per, some personal memories and things, uh, because you can't just unbrainwash. You just have to. She she has to do it herself. They had to convince her that they're more important than her loyalty to Arasaka, and it basically canceled out that brainwash. They were successfully able to pull her out. Lots of rewards from Chad. A great resist torture and drugs uh, role from Allie, and she's back to normal. So the team is back. She might be a little embarrassed. Well, yeah, normal after going through a few brainwashes. <laughs> Allie's got it the worst uh, ultimately. Bit of but, the old trauma. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, you've been you've been through it a little little more than the others. But you know you're all somewhat back. You know, little little worn to wear, but you, you've got a little uh, uh, kind of. Uh, you basically, yeah, you, you, you've got some trauma from things that you've seen and done uh, through the brain dance. And then, like I said, a little embarrassment, you know, kind of coming out and realizing that over this past uh, campaign, right, um, you know, you were the <laughs> only one, you know, and, and, and now here you are kind of getting through this um, and realizing all the things that you've said and done. But the, t the team's back. Um, they're, they're in this back kind of secret room in budget arms. Uh, they just met up uh, getting Allie out of that brainwash situation, talking to General Lundy, him explaining, look, you know, just act normal. Don't trigger anything to Arasaka that you're not brainwashed, that you've even spoke with us. Just go and get this Nova 3 file or whatever it is and bring it to us. We'll take it from there and we'll help, you know, we'll help you from that point uh, dealing with Arasaka. Um, okay. Was that a good uh, little recap? Are there any little things that I need to mention for chat or anything I missed? I feel like that was pretty good. Uh, we have a whole shopping list. That's right. That's right. We should go over that too. That we got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The team uh, basically had their free little shopping run at Arasaka in their their sort of uh, storage and supplies. Um, at this time for real. I know this has happened once before and it was like, turned out to be a little bit of a brain dance. But this one was was real, maybe, right? Hopefully. 
Yeah, you I had don't me. Trust anything you <laughs> yeah. say anymore, Rob. I'm so, I don't even hundred percent. I don't either. I don't even think this is real. I don't think we're actually streaming out. I don't. I don't either. I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, no, but yeah, uh, it's all lies. All lies. That is a good point. Uh, I know you uh, were. Uh, Ali was the one kind of keeping the shopping list, right? I think you. I've have... got it. Let's go yeah. over that before we dive into role play and the game and stuff. Let's just make that part of the recap. Let's go over kind of the current new supplies and because Rush also per purchased that uh, Dune buggy as well. So let's go over the supplies, Ali. What, what did the okay, team? Okay. Very exciting. We got trauma team cards. Yay. Oh, we did, yeah. Yay. Yay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we got, I don't know if it, it must be ammo, because I've just written six biotoxin. Uh, oh, grenades. Oh, oh grenades. I would, I would say, yeah, six rockets for Hades, uh, a, a Geiger counter, um, ten patch kits. Uh, oh yeah, because we kept make, putting holes in our in our hazmat suits. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, you, I think you got a sniper. Nice. Yeah. Smart sniper. Yeah. Cool. Smart, smiling sniper rifle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to read my my writing. Uh, yep. Yeah, radiation suits. We got a spider drone. Very fun. Uh, a grappling hook. I think we got two because it looked like way fun when uh, uh, when Rush did it. <laughs> In the, uh, in the simulation, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, it says five EMPs. Probably more grenades. More grenades yeah. yeah, and that's about it. Yeah, nice. That sounds good. good stuff. Then let's get into the se uh, session. I would like to uh, pull the idea from Shareable Horizon. Now the session starts with a team waking up in Tokyo with Anzu standing <laughs> over the. No, I'm kidding. I'm. Ki oh my God! Could you if imagine? If I have to make another resist torture <laughs> and drugs roll, just it's like gonna... every time we do this, you talk to some other. <laughs> Stop it! Yeah, like, hey, you would have literally. <laughs> we we know. We remember the last time you did this, <laughs> and we're like, we promise we won't do it again. <laughs> all right, let's bring up. Uh, all jokes aside, let's let's bring up some uh, some sirenscape sounds, some some city sounds. Uh, chat, as always, what? let me know if uh, baby. if anything is too loud, and I'll get that adjusted. I usually drop the sirens a little. I know. People that listen to the podcast said it drives them crazy. They always think a cop is trying to pull them over when they're listening to our uh, our stream. So, all right, Sirenscape's but going. But it's the siren part of Sirenscape. It is. But, okay, so the team is in the back room of Budget Arms. General Lundy basically, uh, like I said, explained to you, you know, carry out the mission. Don't uh, alarm Arasaka to any of this. You know, thank you for meeting up and going through this, and we're glad we could help get Ali out of her, the current situation. Rush. It's great to, to finally meet in person, and we're glad to be working with you and your team. Uh, you know, here, here's my direct line uh, that he gives to Rush. As soon as you have this Nova 3, uh, contact us and we'll arrange a meetup. Sure, absolutely. Always happy to be, be part of the fifth corporate war. Let's, ho <laughs> let, let's hope we don't have to go that far. I mean, I'm just happy to be back probably gonna end the same way but good to be making my own mistakes you know <laughs> yeah i mean we're gonna cool. make sure that it doesn't happen the same way as it did before <laughs> yeah who knows what restaurant will die in next i'm hoping Ooh, i know pizza. a really good place on the east side <laughs> great to die in <laughs> great okay well <laughs> no reservations <laughs> right <laughs> to do the I old think that slap our eyes thing. What's that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> what's the best be, best be heading out to the hot zone. Oh yeah, and we forgot <laughs> uh, when we went over the equipment. I know I lightly mentioned Rush's uh, hookup. He he got to. Uh, uh, utilize his connection, well, all of your connection to the Aldecaldos. The very first campaign, Don't Have a Cow, uh, that we ever ran, uh, where you guys kind of helped the Aldecaldos get out uh, or basically avoid some very bad press and some uh, some bad things being pinned on them. That led to, you know, them kind of being friendly and kind of do some favors and things. But that in combination with Rush reaching rank 10, uh, he got the hookup and got this, this dune buggy uh, sort of ride. It's a four-seater. Um, but it should allow you to go beyond normal roads and at least through some rough terrain, um, getting into the hot zone a little bit. Um, it also came with a, a turret on the front. Um, let me just get this right. 
me see. Yeah, it had the uh, it has the the NO2 um, in it, and it also had uh, the Tsunami Helix uh, turret on the front, which uh, basically can do um, the auto fire uh, runs. Has 20 rounds, can run uh, 10 at a time, or 40 rounds, 20 at a time, I believe. Uh, 2d6 max times five when it comes to auto fire. Uh, pretty beefy front turret on this dune buggy, as well as the uh, the uh, nit nitrous oxide. So when you click that, you can use your normal action to get another move on driving the uh, dune buggy if ever needed. Um, but yeah, you've got this done up. It's not the best looking thing. Uh, a lot of the, the efforts put into having these little bells and whistles and toys attached and it being a very functional dune buggy. Um, but it is kind of chromed out with the typical Nomad sort of uh, brown sand uh, sort of camo uh, look to the piping that's been painted. I mean, it's not style we're looking for, right? <laughs> This we can worry about fine. what's that this thing will do us fine i'm yeah. gonna do a cool like i'm gonna jump over the <laughs> the frame into the driver's seat you know two feet in the air just land in the driver's seat Toots? mount up <laughs> if i I'm remember sure. correctly did i buy this outright uh i think we're rent aren't we renting i it? think i thought you bought it he bought it. I think, I think yeah. I did. Yeah, originally, I originally I Rush was going to... say gonna, anything to no, get a sick ride. No, no, no. Originally, Rush was going to... I've been wanting gonna, a cool car for ages. You know, ori originally, Sorry. Rush was uh, renting it, and then um, Ali uh, did a whole persuasion. Uh, they did a contested role and convinced Rush to kind of lean into wanting shiny, new shiny things and uh, got it. But he got it for a deal. I think he only paid like 8 k instead of 10 k You got your 20% off. Oh, yeah. Uh, haggle deal. <laughs> Uh, but now you own it, that was... that, and let me tell you, that's a great deal for a customized mm -hmm. dune buggy. Getting it for only eight thousand comes with that that hel helix tsunami turret. turret and and the nitrous oxide. I mean, you got great deal. Uh, the seats, four seats. That was also yeah. part of my whole plan to yeah. kind of like you know make you in debt <laughs> so that you can keep working for hours. But I would like, uh, but I would like, uh... I would like Bud to give me a uh, you know uh, athletics check just to see. How oh, cool. to do the cool yeah you got it got to make got to make it the first roll of the the year the first roll of the the session um and it's something as simple as as bud just trying to hop in and he did nice okay it, yeah. Good. Nice. yeah bud slides in there like you know something like a, a superhero or dukes of hazard style or whatever whatever reference you want to think of just sliding across across the the front front uh chromed out piping right into the the shotgun seat uh before everyone else but yeah yeah, Hades would kind of just scramble up uh, and take place right behind uh, the biggest of the weapons. <laughs> I'm sure in another life you were a solo, huh, bud? Don't, don't joke about that. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, I still not convinced this is a real life, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm just using humor to cope cope with the uh, immense trauma that we've all been dealt for the past few uh, past few months. Who knows? But you know, if we can't laugh about it, what can you do? Drive <laughs> headlong into the hot zone. Well, <laughs> sounds like our evening is planned. Rush. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna hop on. <laughs> Yeah, as you're all getting in, Rush, your agent goes off. Kenji is calling you. Kenji being your assistant and driver assigned oh, by Arasaka. Um, but he's giving you a call. Oh, God. Hey, Kenji. Uh, what's going on? Yeah, yes, uh, Mr. Arlo, Rush Sims, please. Uh, do you need a ride? Do I need to come and pick you up? I, I am, I'm just wondering what's the, the current status. Uh, are you carrying forth the, the current mission? Or do you need transportation? Oh no, I, I've got a new ride. Uh, don't worry, we're going to take care of everything. We're on our way to do it right now. Okay, very well. If you need anything, just give me a ring. You got it. So, I'll hang up. Hey, that was Kenji. Uh, <laughs> uh, micromanagers, don't you love them? Yeah. yeah. What did he sound like? Uh, he See. sounded a little unsure, actually. Uh, it sounded like he wanted to hear that we're getting the job done. Well, 
I mean, where we stopped in, it was plausible that we'd be... I mean, we told Arasaka about getting new ammo and gear, so... Got our bases covered there. Absolutely. Preparation is everything. That's mm. right. You can't go into the hot zone if you're not ready. Yeah. Well, I certainly don't uh, miss this part of the job. <laughs> Going into a, a radioactive hellscape? No, that's fine. Uh, oh, it's, it's the more, dealing with Arasaka. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is a nice change to hear. <laughs> remembering where our lies end. <laughs> yeah. And uh, trying to just dig our way out of our own graves. But, uh, hey, let's get out there. Nova. And I'll hit the accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And stall. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh. you're gonna break it! <laughs> Don't flood it. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Does anyone have any. Uh, I, I think it's more or... a sea, sea sickness thing. No, oh, point him the other way! <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, you shouldn't say backwards. It's just gonna make him more sick. I don't really stall it. Fine, guys. <laughs> okay. I'm All right. too cool for that. Uh. We do a sick, <laughs> sick little burnout, and then we we ride off towards the uh, the hot zone. That's nice. gonna make me roll, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna bring up uh, you know a little bit of the the city map here, um, just to kind of show it off a little uh, to chat as well, and just kind of set the vibe of where we're at. Um, obviously, you're over here in the Haywood Industrial Zone, sort of Haywood um, area where Budget Arms and your Heading back over, kind of passing the exec zone to cross over the San Moro Bay, um, crossing over uh, Little China, and just making your way through the city. Um, and it's, you know, normal city traffic, you know, it's taking you uh, almost an hour just to get over there to the center of the city. Um, but now you're approaching the hot zone. If you look at the map, um, let me know which side you want to approach it from. Obviously, you're coming from... Uh, the 16 where it crosses over into the exec zone, kind of the little China side of the map. You're, you're coming in that way. Um, do you want to ride into the hot zone going through the old med center? Uh, it, kind of like in between the old med and old bank block uh, is, is uh, one of the main roads that kind of heads into the hot zone. There's also one uh, that you can go up around to the north um, into the old city center. Um, there's also one kind of uh, in the southwest uh, coming up from the old Corp Center, um, the, the south side of that where the park uh, kind of uh, is, is decaying. You can see there on the kind of southwest side. So you've got those three <coughs> options. Um, what is the team thinking? Um, anyone have any? I'm not great with directions. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I would leave that to Bud. <laughs> Driver's Where is, rule. Where's the place where we'll get the least amount of crap? Oh, well, that's uh, maybe, right here. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I can roll like a streetwise to, to know what's the what's the sort of least gang infested. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Uh, way like in. the most deserted kind of area. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think you and uh, Rush might be good at uh, giving me a, a streetwise and see. Street smarts. Well, that's a one, so that's going to be bad for me. I'm focused on driving. I've got a six. That makes sense. Oh, dude. Rush? <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, I just found it. Nothing like backseat driving, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, that's a 15. Yeah, you're, you're a little bit at a loss. Um, you know, none of you have really dealt with the hot zone that much, with the exception of you know, not really dealing with it while in the brain dance mm. from Arasaka. And who knows how exactly really, like accurate that was. Exactly. You know, for the most part, all of you have avoided the hot zone. You know that there's not much there unless, like, you're a scavenger or raider. Uh, you're trying to hide from authorities in the city or something. Uh, but you know it's dangerous. There's, you know, natural disaster sort of physical dangers and, and things, you know, in the environment as well as, like, the radiation patches and things getting in the ground. You just really haven't messed with it enough. Um, so it's, you know, your, your guess is as good as yourself as a, as a character, as a player. Um, so you can look at it and kind of just say, do you want to go 
uh, from the side that you're approaching from between the old bank block and old med center? Do you want to go a little more north and come down from the old city center? Or do you want to head over to the kind of southwestern side and try to come up uh, from the old corp center park side? Well, well I'm going to run. So it's all the same to me. I'm going with, I'm going the most direct route between where we are now and the, the, yeah. the hot zone. Yeah. I don't even like, think about it. I'm just like, uh, that way. <laughs> it just goes. <laughs> nice, yeah. Weren't you the one who said preparation was everything? Well, He's prepared we're, we're, to follow his instincts. <laughs> prepared to follow this road into the, <laughs> into the hot zone. Into nothing! <laughs> yeah, you start hey. heading in. Uh, you can head in yeah. between the old bank block and old med center. Um, yeah. Kind of making your way you know, towards uh, the hot zone. As you get in... Um, to those old blocks. Um, you can see that it's kind of opening up a little bit as far as traffic. Not a lot of people are traveling in this area. It's a lot of dilapidated buildings and abandoned warehouses and shops and things that are barely structurally sound um, because this is kind of the outskirts of the hot zone, right? Um, and as you get in here and the normal civilian life kind of goes to almost like a combat zone feel and a a very desperate feel, lots of homeless people and encampments and scavengers going around and people like that. Um, you also see a lot of like um, construction sort of things happening. Um, very much so is this considered kind of the rebuilding zone um, in a sense. You know, everything uh, through this section leading up into the hot zone um, is, you know, either under construction, uh, being cleansed or cleared out, um, or it's uh, uh, being rebuilt. Um, in chat, let me know if sounds get a little too loud. I know sometimes the construction sounds can get a bit much. Um, but yeah, as you get closer, you're passing little, you know, draft drones and um, kind of flight drones, city workers, um, different excavation vehicles. You see a couple buildings being kind of torn down and rubble dealt with. Some beneath ground tunnels and wiring and tubes being pulled out by other sort of uh, mechs and drones and, and city workers. And as you're going by, the one thing, even without a perception that you can kind of see is a lot of the construction workers and people, they kind of like take notice. Everyone's kind of like looking, noticing that you're in this dune buggy, kind of heading towards the hot zone. Um, but you get further and further through the construction sites. Um, and sure enough, it starts to kind of, kind of, uh, uh, you know, get a, a bit more desolate um, in the sense that uh, a lot of the construction starts kind of dying down. Um, it start, starts getting a, a little more uh, dilapidated, run down. You can kind of see that a lot of these buildings and things as you uh, get closer to the hot zone are kind of covered in this sort of black reddish soot. Like there's just this, you know, rubble and black dust and things from the years, let alone from fourth corporate war, but leading up to, and then all the blood rains and weather and things that have happened um, in this part of the city that's just been abandoned and neglected. Um, so as you get closer, it almost gets like, you know, a bit cloudy and dusty in the air. You can almost taste the air, has like a metallic taste to it. As it thickens, there's these little gusts of winds that kind of come through. It's almost like its own little ecosystem or, or something that you're entering. But as you're kind of transitioning to that, that sort of part of the city, um, the other thing you notice is there's all these sort of red hollow signs, like these, these like red notice signs pinned up to different street uh, poles, buildings, and things with holographic message posted up. But as you're driving by, um, it's, it, it's ha too hard to read at the speed that you're driving by, but you do see there's notice signs as you're going. Okay, rad suits, everybody. Okay, What's let me the, uh, Has anyone got the counter out? I thought Bud had it last time. Bud, I'm where's the counter? I'm yeah. driving. Maybe I'll well, where'd you the... put it? Where'd you yeah. put the counter? <laughs> it's in the case with everything else. All right, well, let's pull over. Let's suit up. And let's okay. uh, get this bad boy out so we know uh, where's me, uh, spicy. Let me find somewhere to tuck this that uh, isn't just, like, right in the open. I'll just, you know, find a place behind a couple of wrecks or something just to, to quickly tuck us in. Yeah, yeah. You, there's plenty of wrecked out vehicles and rubble yeah. kind of coming into the road. Um, you're able to kind of pull over uh, next to a couple in an abandoned vehicle. Um, and you're able to kind of get your, your, your radiation suits on. You're able to get the Geiger counter handy. Now you have that with you. You're able to kind of gear up. And during this moment, um, you're also able to see what one of those red hollow signs are. Um, and you can basically see it's a, it's a city notice. Um, it basically says, um, you know, city notice. 
Um, this hot zone, in quotes, obviously, um, with the word zone in quotes, says this hot zone uh, deemed inhabitable uh, is not protected by public services nor recognized as an official district of Night City. Enter at own risk. The city nor still registered privatized property owners uh, can be held responsible for any activities resulting in injury or death within this zone. Um, so basically, uh, you're on your own. It's one of those typical city sort of, uh, you know, enter at your own risk. This zone isn't uh, sanctioned or protected uh, by official Night City. Um, you've never really dealt with this. Like I said, you haven't entered uh, the hot zone before, um, but you're seeing this. Um, and just as you kind of uh, rack this up and and um, and start uh, reading that sign and getting back into the dune buggy, um, everyone give me a perception. Yeah, I was wondering uh, before we yeah. drive off, I was going to scout ahead. Sure, yeah, you uh, can yeah. do that. Roll of perception. <laughs> uh... Ooh. There she is. Oh, man. Nope. Forget about it. <laughs> I got dust in my eyes or something. <laughs> Hayes just Ooh. does not care. <laughs> Damn it. I knew I should have... <laughs> it's not a holiday, Hayes. <laughs> Worn glasses or something. Says you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta take holidays where they come. <laughs> nice. Yeah, um... Yeah, Rush and, and Bud, um, you can see... Uh, basically... You know, out of all this rubble and in the area, you can see, like, there's a few people kind of hanging out of some of the windows. Um, looks like, uh, you know, maybe some scavers. There's, like, a family across the street. Like, you pulling over and, and getting suited up and reading the sign and just getting ready here has gotten a little bit of attention. You can see there are some locals in these rundown buildings kind of taking notice. Um, no immediate threats. You're not getting any weird feelings, but you do get the feeling some eyes are on you. Um, and looking up ahead, uh, Bud and Rush, you both notice um, up up ahead where the road kind of fans out to the corporate center, kind of entering the where, where the where the hot zone basically gets extra hot, right where the destruction really begins and things can get sticky. Right up there where the the, the end of the road kind of parts, um, you can see like a group of people. Um, you see like maybe a handful of people, like five to ten people. You can see a few cyber bikes. You can see what looks like some type of Jeep or van. Um, it, it's, it's hard to see at this distance, but you definitely see some people up there. And Rush, um, you know, your amazing perception. Um, you can see uh, that they're, they're, like, looking down the street, and they notice you. Like, they're looking. They're kind of pointing. You can even see one has binoculars, and they're looking. Um, and, yeah, that your critical success perception, I, I, I got to give it to you. you. You can tell that these are nomads. Um, they, they definitely have nomad leathers on. And they have like that that nomad vibe, um, but from this distance, you're not getting enough. And I and I, you know, you're not getting enough to really see any tags or logos or things like that. You just get the vibe; these are nomads. Nomads ahead, and uh, looks like they're looking at us. How expensive are your eyes? I can't believe you can make out that they're nomads. That's nice. Oh well, I don't you know. even see anybody. Uh, macro I, with one, macro with the other. Yeah, I really should have worn glasses or something before we went speeding on a open air bike. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn oh. Hades slightly so she's looking in the correct direction. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, what, those are they, definitely nomads. Oh, what? Do they look hostile or anything? Oh, don't look like gang goons, right? Nomads usually have more of a code, but. Depends on the clan, right? Yeah, and true. whether I've dated any of them. This is that is shit, also true. true. <laughs> well, they're between us and where we gotta go, so... And they spotted us already, so let's... Let's not go battling at them, let's, uh... See what they want. Alright. Okay. If they want anything from us, otherwise we could just kind of... Try and pass by them. Like I said, they've seen us already, so... Alright, well, uh, I guess Rush and I will do the talking if need, and you uh, guys Hades. can do, do the <laughs> yeah, shooting. Hades, Hades can uh, point that also giant helix at him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what I said, right? Yeah, with bullets. Yeah. 
<laughs> with rockets, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's head over. Okay, so we all mount back up now in our slick rad suits, our sub punk futuristic rad suits. And I'm going to drive, but like not tear at them at like combat speed. You know, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm going to slow down a decent amount before them to kind of acknowledge that I'm not, we're not trying to like charge at them, come in firing, you know, and if I notice any change in their demeanor, you know, they'll rush to combat positions or whatever, then I'll reassess. But otherwise I'm going to kind of loop my driving, try and make it obvious that we're not, you know, inherently hostile. Yeah. Oh yeah. Drive at them hostily. Yes. Uh, yeah, as you approach, this is why uh, I hate to do the driving. Yeah. <laughs> as you approach, yeah, the, uh, the construction sounds and city sounds kind of fade in the distance as this sort of hot zone, um, you know, dusty weather wind sort of vibe kind of like takes over. Um, and, and you find yourself, you know, almost in, in the middle of, you know, kind of a completely different environment. Um, just as the air kind of thickens, so does the weather. Um, you come in, the winds are picking up as you get closer. You can see kind of like the red dust and soot getting whipped around. Um, these nomads all kind of have masks wrapped around and, and, and cloths coming across their leathers, um, kind of protecting themselves. Most of them have goggles. You can see um, some obvious uh, cyber eyes and things. Um, but everyone give me a perception as you approach, approach and get a bit closer now. Uh. Can someone with empathy maybe do a human do, perception do, as well? Do any of us have empathy? Yeah, whoever <laughs> wants to do a, a human perception, go for that in, in place of regular perception. But decide who's going to do that. You'd think the performer would, would have some empathy, right? Some human you perception. You're wrong! I've maxed out my cyberware, babes! Oh, no. <laughs> I'm I think I have some. <laughs> I have some. I can roll it. And even before, I'm all about me, me, me. And as you approach, it's um, not the worst thing ever. Yeah, it's um, you're not really getting a good read on the vibe. Uh, you know, between the masks and the goggles and things like, they don't really change their demeanor. Even as you approach, um, they don't seem to step up or get worried. They don't seem to relax a little more. They're just kind of holding their position and, and watching you approach. Um, you do see one guy kind of walk over, kind of to the pack that was up in the front. Um, kind of like talks to a couple of them as they part and he takes a step up towards the front kind of waiting for you all to drive up and approach. The other thing that you notice, um, and we can say like maybe Bud and Rush um, getting the higher of the perception, you notice aside from these nomads, um, you can also see there's, you know, some people behind them off to the right. You can see like some tents built up, a big sort of makeshift tent that's kind of half rising up to the side of a wrecked out building. Um, like they're kind of half tent, half building one of those, and then there's other tents. You can see more cyber bi bikes, a couple other jeeps, and a van. You see another like maybe 10 or 15 nomad-looking guys coming in and out, a couple chilling on cyber bikes. Uh, you know, aside from the, the handful that are right up here in the front with that one guy that walked up. So you're getting a count of about 15, 20 plus nomads within this little pack or clan. Um, but the other thing you notice that is a little odd. You don't know how to, what to make of it. Is you're also seeing about like maybe 15 or 20 uh, people all in like radiation suits, similar to the ones that you're wearing. Um, they're kind of in, in those radiation suits, but you can see um, a lot of them have um, the the cyber matrix. Uh, uh, what is it? The the Raven Micro Cyb uh, Micro Waldo kind of tech hand thing that just came out. Anybody that's that's been uh, keeping up with the Artal Saurian. Uh, uh, cyber gun miss or whatever that they just released with all the new gear um it's one of those sort of like tech hands you see like a few of them kind of have like these these new micro cyber uh, micro waldo tech hand things you can see um a few of them have those um Cy uh, cyclops international bug eye cyber eye uh, implants kind of put in um like these these people in the white hazmat suits they're kind of like lugging around wheelbarrows and little uh, barrel drones kind of lugging looks like equipment or things and they're they're coming in from the hot zone you see them kind of going down an alley from the hot zone almost like they're excavating things or gathering things it's hard to get a read on what exactly is going on here um, but all the people in hazmat suits look more like techie or scientist like mm. in in their in their gear and things that they're wearing and doing it's, it's just hard to get a get a read on it um but yeah you're seeing all these nomads you're seeing all these people you're approaching the one guy kind of steps up the only other thing um, that I'd like to point out, uh, 
because I'm not, I, I know someone on the team, it was either Rush or Bud or Allie, I think, um, had um, as part of their um, local uh, area or whatever, uh, Nomad culture or something. It might have been Rush. It might have been the Fixer culture thing that you were in with Nomad. I'm really sure that would be Rush. Yeah. I'm someone sure had, or in their life I'm path, someone had a Nomad hookup. In, in my life path, I had, um, uh, my parents were nomads. Yeah, I just dated one. Okay. Um, yeah, I think... Didn't really get enough into the culture. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, a level 10 fixer would know, like, most nomad cultures, right? Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, um, and I don't know if it's here, but we I had it in my Ground Zero notes, too. Yeah, you have... I don't have an... It has to be you because it's uh, it's it's a fixer is the only one that would have uh, you know learn different yeah. cultures on the ranks. Uh, but you uh, mm -hmm. one one of the earlier uh, rank cultures we did it might have been when you ranked up to five or six or when you got to the next bracket um, you picked nomads um, as a culture. So I'll give you that um, kind of plane of the perception. Like you know you can confirm this is definitely nomads um, as you get up uh, close enough to really get a read on it. And um, yeah, give me a one d ten rush. Okay. Oh. Did it roll? I didn't no, see it. Nope. Okay. Did you so roll five. it like on the text? Yeah, there we go. Nice. Yeah, you can. Uh, you you recognize uh, the the logo that you can see kind of embroidered in the leather. Um, this sort of R, you know, with a backwards R with a C in the center of it, like an R C R. And um, they're no, known as the Roaming Chrome Raiders. Um, and you know that they pretty much, uh, they, they roam around very nomad style, but they don't deal with transports like a lot of nomads typically do during Time of the Red. Um, they borderline in raider activity. Uh, you know, they are a clan, they are a family in that sense of nomad. Um, but they travel around kind of to different ghost towns, um, different kind of abandoned places, and kind of down in their luck combat zone-esque sort of places hence maybe being here in the hot zone um and just kind of looting stealing excavating uh taking whatever they want but you also know that they you know they deal in drugs and things like that they'll deal in items that they get they're not above stealing um they've also been known to kind of uh you know do a lot of slave labor and kind of make other clans do work for them and people and things like that as well um, they're just not really a good noble uh, nomad clan, um, but you also know, just like any, yeah, and just and just yeah. and, and and well, the other thing too that you know about like this clan and, and like a lot of nomads, like um, you know that just like most of them, and you being in with the culture, that they're also into trading and things like that. Um, you know, lot, lots of times you can pay them off, you can uh, just kind of get them to turn another cheek. Um, it just depends on what kind of situation you're in with them and, and, you know, what's up with them. But you at least know that these are the uh, roaming Chrome Raiders. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are the roaming Chrome Raiders. I recognize the logo. Uh, you guys know anything about them? Yeah. I can tell you a little bit if you need. It's not really in my repertoire, but... Um, just wondering what's the angle here and how we can get past these guys. Well, I assume they're scavenging everything here, but let's just call it salvage to them. Sure. That's going to be tricky, because that's exactly what we're trying to do. Well, I'll let, I'll let you do the talking, Rush. And right there, All while right. you're kind of talking to each other and Rush fills you in on who they are, as you're approaching, you see a big, one of those big giraffe drones, like you saw on the construction site, kind of chung ch chung ch walk by uh, behind them, kind of pulling another sort of crate that has all this stuff. And some of those white sort of hazmat suit people are kind of like trailing behind it. But you can see this giraffe looks all tagged up. Some of the wires look exposed. And you can see some nomad guy next to it wearing uh, cyber goggles kind of like working it so obviously uh without any deduction here you can tell they have some type of portable system they obviously jacked a giraffe drone and they're using it too um so just you know they're definitely not above thieving and and things like that as well but just as you notice that you have your little conversation um that one nomad guy that was kind of walking his way up to the front as you were approaching um steps up and makes eye contact with all of you you know makes sure that he 
takes a moment and looks each one of you in the eyes um, as he starts to talk and uh, just kind of steps up like, Que paso, amigos? Uh, welcome to the hot zone currently occupied by us. Uh, what brings you here? I can see that you're doing a little bit of salvage. Yeah. Yeah, I respect that. Now, we're here to take care of a little business. We got to do some cleanup, if you know what I mean. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I can respect that, too. Uh, so a little little bit of salvaging yourself there, I see, huh? He starts looking at your vehicle. A little vehicle. bit further deeper in. Yeah. Uh, nice vehicle. You How far do you think you're going to get uh, into the hot zone in, in a vehicle? <laughs> oh, we'll see. We'll get far enough. Well, hey, uh, means nothing to me. Carry on as you will, but, uh, you know, there's got to be a bit of a toll. Like I said, uh, this hot zone's occupied by us currently, so, uh, you know, anything coming and going's got to kind of go through us on account of, well, we're running it right now. So uh, I'm sure you can respect that. About really dangerous stuff that uh, you really don't want to get your hands on. Ooh. Now I really want to get my hands on it. Uh, so what's what's this about, little Philly? What's uh, what exactly are we talking about here? What's your name? Oh, I go by Troy, and uh, who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Hey, none Troy. of your business. Oh, <laughs> um, boys, I think we got a sassy one on this team. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. The gun just <laughs> zoom. <laughs> hey, Troy, we're not here to ruffle feathers. To be honest, it's not good gear that we're out to get our uh, employers have a a mistake hidden out here that we're just here to clean up and roll out that's it to be honest they've sent us out here because the likelihood of us dying by just handling the goods is through the roof we're just trying to make the best of a bad situation we're not here to step on your toes give me a persuasion Allie. Uh, just bear with me, because my computer is freezing something awful. Yeah. Uh, persuasion. Hey, PWB you know uh, says listening while packing up his house. I saw the post. Congrats on uh, getting the new house. I saw you, uh, somebody else, I guess, put a bid and you weren't going to get it. And yeah. then like a day later, you got a call that they backed out and you were able to get it. Congratulations. I think that's awesome. All right, awesome. everyone. Party at PWBs. Yeah, everyone. We're heading to uh, <laughs> PWBs. Okay, uh, I'm going to use one of the plus twos that was so graciously given uh, at the very beginning of this. Sure. Uh, uh, let's see how this plays out. That's a 19. Nice. Um, yeah, you, you say all that. He just, oh, uh, an expendable team. Get into, yeah, sounds like a, you might have a corpo uh, boss there. Uh, very familiar. <laughs> uh, well, look, yeah. uh, uh Cool. You don't want to step on toes. We don't. We don't need to step on toes either. Uh, so maybe you know we can come to some type of uh, agreement, and then uh, you know you can just get on your way. Uh, get to work. Do what you got to do. Rush. <laughs> Rush is like I'll fight every single one of these nomads to keep the cash. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bribe. Come on, just Rush. Give a, little, give a little bribe. It's a little taste. Taste of the action. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just debating on whether I should try bribery or haggling. Just debating how much I should stab this guy. Well, this would be <laughs> Rush. Give them some of your money. Well, this really wouldn't. Yeah, this wouldn't wouldn't be bribery unless, like, you know, you had something on them to bribe them with, right? And try to, you know, bribe them on something. Um, but I, you know, this could definitely be a haggle thing. Um, the the thing is, is you know, like with these guys, you, you you've either got to run through them what you're coming and going with you got to pay them some homage or toll fee to enter you know that they're not going to bend otherwise they they know that they have you outnumbered they're they just run like that they're not a nice nomad clan you know that yeah um but so you've got to decide it's the cost of doing business you've got to decide how much do you think would be a normal grease's palm to just go by and then you can kind of do a haggle and see if you can get that 20 percent cheaper or whatever um or you know you can try some persuasive stuff don't let me decide the team is just going with what's being said you know you all can do whatever you want but um but you know that you know you've got to deal with this guy in one way or another uh, that was trading plus my role ability right exactly yeah yeah your haggle is trading plus your role ability. okay that's a 28 Jeez, oh my 
my god! Oh, look at that base, 24, amazing. 24! Wow. He's got 10 base abilities, so... He's got, oh yeah, 10. I, and I've Me got a 14 in training. So, uh... Troy, <laughs> right? Gonna happen. <laughs> he yeah, goes, Troy, so, then. Troy, all right, all right, I'll take it down, I'll take it down. <laughs> so what's, uh, in your name? Oh, well, my name is Rush. I know you've heard of me. Uh, I bring out the shirt. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see, and I'll, I'll hand yeah, him you the see, shirt, too. Yeah, you hand him the shirt. <laughs> as you're handing him the shirt, uh, even without a human perception, you see his eyes kind of go big. And Actually, I have heard of you. Uh, you come from a nomad background, don't you? I do. I do. Things ended badly, but, you know, hey, we all find our way in Night City. Sounds like you've been uh, ending a lot of things badly uh, from what, I, what I've been hearing. You got, you got a bit of a rep attached to you there, buddy. Uh, but I have heard of you. Yeah, I, I knew you had. Now, if since you've heard of me, you know that I'm probably in the ish a little bit in this too. Because I wouldn't be out here if I didn't have to be. Uh, I, I, I can feel that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that means I'm desperate, you understand? All right. Yeah, and you're slowing me down. Yeah, okay. Uh, but we're still in a situation where uh, <laughs> business is business and rush is as much as I respect what you've been through. Uh, you also know we have to work the way we work, right? Well, it's of almost course. Like these, it's almost like these guys don't realize uh, who runs the best night markets in, in Night City where they have to sell their stuff. Um, yeah, Bud, give me a persuasion. Yeah, I'm just trying to add on to his, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, his yeah. mystique. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, you guys, you gotta, you gotta flog that the stuff you're scavenging through someone. Yeah, and just uh, um, and yeah, it, it's definitely difficult now doing rep checks, um, against Rush's yeah, rep rep when he gets up to rank <laughs> ten. Like I've. <laughs> Because I've been I've been like cushioning the rep a little bit, but it's got it's got to follow the rank as well. And I and I would like to say this too, just on a, on a side note for the the team role play and what what they've been going through. Um, I would like to picture that there's a lot of stuff Rush does um, off cam, we'll say, right? So like as you guys are doing all these missions over the past 10, 11 seasons, I picture. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rush, but I picture like in between things, Rush is like, without anyone knowing, you know, on his agent, he's like ordering a gift basket to that corpo you just work with, like, uh, you know, what was her name, Tori uh, from City Clean Waste Management, and like, you know, you're sending like gifts and like, oh, by the way, uh, I, I may be in Tokyo right now, but I did get a lead on this that you might find interesting, and like, you, you know, you're greasing wheels and things, because I, I, I can only imagine getting up to rank ten. Um, it's got to be beyond just the campaigns we've been doing, right? Because it's just so epic and you've invested so much into that. I feel like he's been working behind the scenes this whole time, you know, like greasing wheels and making friends and make a phone call. How, sending, how many agents? How many know? agents do you have? Right? Well, they actually have a couple of robot arms that come out so we can be on like several at once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rob, I, rolled, I rolled another one uh, for a total of five. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah. When you you basically cool. interject and say that uh, Troy doesn't even look, he just kind of holds up his hand and he says, "Still looking at you, Rush." He's like, "As much as I respect you, I got plenty of hookups to night markets, a couple midnight markets too. Uh, maybe I could help you a partner with some too." Uh, but yeah, back back to business. Let's uh let's take care of this. I got plenty of things I got to get back to. I'm sure you got to get on. Uh... Of course, of course, we're all busy here. Let's get to the point. How much are you asking for? Well, uh, he starts looking at your vehicle. He starts looking you all up and down. He's not even trying to be stealthy about it. You can tell he's sizing you up. Uh, I think 10K would work just well. You know, you get on, yeah, you do your so. gig. 10K? You, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I actually <Hey>. lost. <laughs> I mean, Jeez, what else do you want, a kidney? Judging by your custom wares here and uh, your whole setup. And uh, you definitely came more than prepared these... Nice, clean, new radiation suits. Uh, this chromed out, uh, clearly nomad customized buggy right here. Uh, hell, we could even just do a trade. You want to do a trade? Uh, doom buggy, mm. carry on, do the machine. <laughs> we, we don't get, get no. any 
uh, any uh, shots to the back on our way out. That's my. That's what I want guaranteed. Hey, look, uh, all our business is on the up and up, especially with Mr. Rush here. Uh, look, just a little payola, carry on your way, and I guarantee we'll, we'll stay out of your hair. You just don't step on our toes. Not in these shoes. All right, Rush, should we pay up and... Uh... Well, how much can you get it down to? I bet he can get it down. He can get it down. <laughs> Guys, it's just, Come on, it's, Rush. Should, should I try another haggle? Maybe oh, it's just me coming out of the brain Look, washing, but it's literally just Eddie's. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you do a. I'll let you do a persuasion um, to see if you're persuasive enough to get get the amount. Uh, you know, cut in half down to five k. You've already passed your trading, um, so you're going to get your twenty percent off. But we need to establish the amount. He's obviously shooting for the mm. highest amount. Um, but, but you know, just for the sake of you not doing another trading, I think a little persuasion to get the amount down. You're trading. You've already haggled a little discount being Rush. You know, he knows who you are. You already had a great role. But, yeah, give me that persuasion. Oh, 13. It's not like we don't work. <laughs> you know. Hold on one second here. Yeah, we won't after this. <laughs> how, how resistant we are to getting fleeced just like god damn it yeah, there, there goes our pay for this job I know right oh and I got did a 13 um, did you say the word I can shoot him I can shoot him I, you can use uh, we've got 3 plus 2's I mean you'd have to double up since it's retroactive oh my god but... Use all three. Yeah, right now, right now it goes to the defender because it's a tie. So he's obviously not going to back down. Look, I can tell you're desperate. You got to work for this corp that's using you as expendables. Pay the 10k, or you're already expended. Uh, so he's got a, he's kind of has you a little bit. Um, you could use plus twos at double the cost uh, on post roll. A little homebrew I do. Anybody watch new new to watching? Um, I'll allow plus twos or luck to be used at, at double the amount um, post roll if they don't want to call it prior. That's the only way out of this right now. Yeah, Is that's he... what I'll do. I'll do two plus twos then to add one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, look. Yeah. Rush, uh, a 5K discount's pretty good. Yeah, look, here. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, that, 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 that's a big leap rush. I'll do it. 5K, get on with it. We get on with what we're doing. But I want your contact. In the future, I'm, I'm holding you accountable to one of these uh, night markets. <laughs> I wouldn't expect any less. So I'll transfer the eddies. And this whole deal is is uh, very much tinged on the basis that uh, there is a future again, and you don't shoot us in the back. Yeah, uh, Rush, give me a stealth. No, you have my word. Uh, no back shooting. <laughs> Good. Because we have yeah. leveled a whole freaking society for less. That's true. Nice and yeah, Rush, you're able to you're able to slide out five uh, k. Um, don't forget, uh, take off your your twenty uh, percent there, so it's really only four k. Um, so you're able to slide out four k and um, uh, get that to him without That's him. That's out of the Arasaka money. Cause, uh, exactly. Uh, out, cash. No, no, that, that was my whole thing. Yeah, out of the Arasaka <laughs> money. You're able to slide that out without them seeing that there's more money and a, tra a tracking device and all that stuff in the case. You know, That's what the whole stealth thing was, to see how smooth you could just get the money without them seeing everything else, you know? Um, Very nice. Okay. But yeah, you slide him the money. Uh, all right, hey, boys, uh, we got someone passing through. It's all good, and good luck in uh, the hot zone. Enjoy your stay, and uh, yeah... <laughs> Have some fun. They kind of part the ways. You see uh, the cyber bike back up. Some of the nomads uh, kind of stepping back. Um, you see the, the people in those hazmat suits kind of continue on working and doing things as they kind of part. And now you're kind of at this position where you're entering uh, one, of, one of the first of kind of roundabouts. Um, you can see rubble and, and things all over it. It's not going to be an easy travel like the construction road coming in. Uh, to the hot zone, this is going to require some driving rolls to get above the, uh, you know, over the rubble and things. But you need to decide, are you heading to the right, passing their tents and camp and stuff, going around kind of the north side? Uh, I'll bring up the map again. 
uh, going around the north side, you know, up around that circle, past the bank block, more towards the old city center sort of side of it to try to enter into the hot zone? Or do you want to go to the left, kind of going south side to try to enter into the hot zone? Because where you stand right now, you can't really go forward into the hot zone. You have to go right or left to get around and try to find a way in just from the extent of damage and rubble and stuff. I think we go south where it seems like the damage is a little bit lighter. And we go, we hook around to the south and then come in. Oh. And that, that ends, yeah. Like the terrain might be easier. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Because yeah. we just, we, either way, we just don't know right now exactly what it is. So we have to take one way or the other. I'm going to try and spray Troy with a little bit of gravel as I pull away. <laughs> um. <laughs> Just enough to make it look like an accident. I just, whoops. Yeah, yeah. Give <laughs> me a, uh, yeah. Give me, give me a driving uh, land vehicle uh, check just to see if you pull off that little little tactful move. Won't won't be difficult. Um, just a little simple maneuver. And then um, Hades Russian Alley. Um, as Bud's doing that, one uh, each each one of you give me a human perception. Nice and Bud absolutely uh, perfectly lands right on Troy and not the others. And he's just like. Uh, Fuck. <laughs> he just like he looks he looks a little 15 upset. For Hades. Uh sorry, again my computer is so slow. Uh da, 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 He's da, like, oh I haven't done Cyberpunk in so long. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> How does it work? Why, why would you do this to me? <laughs> I think it's well, it's just it's quite a hot day. And uh my computer's not not wearing the appropriate clothing. Wait, Did that I doesn't roll seem something? right. <laughs> that doesn't look right. It just says five. There's no uh, skill okay. or stat it's attack. Five. Okay, I can I can see a die rolling. <laughs> there we go. That looks oh, better. No. Uh oh, that looks like no, a one. Okay, truly, my uh, my computer is very angry at me. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, I saw it go real slow too. Doing I think it's stuff. I guess. Yeah, it definitely it went weird on mine too. Yeah, That's when you so rolled strange. it. Um, yeah, maybe the heat's messing up your computer, but. Check it out as Bud peels out and you kind of start heading south. Kicks up the dirt on Troy. You see him get aggravated and kind of kick it down and brush it off the other nomads. A couple of them even like laugh at him and they start like walking back towards their camp. But as you're going, um, Rush and Hades, um, both of you notice that um, some of these sort of like techie looking guys or whatever, um, these people that are in those sort of white hazmat radiation suits um, with some of the tools and kind of doing some of the work, um, as you past them going south one's kind of cutting in through an alley a couple of them kind of like look over at you and they just kind of look distraught like they purposely make eye contact with you and one of them even kind of like looks at, at rush like getting that better human perception and like m makes a sort of face like please help us um, they look r really uh desperate um as they look at you and you, you guys kind of continue on south but just for that split moment of driving out and peeling out the dirt you make that eye contact and you get that vibe that human perception uh sort of result from that eye contact and this is where we'll take our five minute break don't anyone go anywhere i'm going to leave the mics hot chat please hang out we'll be back in just five minutes i mean oh, well that really sucks for them I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm like, has doing favors for anyone ever gotten us anywhere no. good? <laughs> you right, don't, that, you don't actually, even finish the sentence, I, Ellen, no. Actually, no, that's not true. That's not true because we have a whole little lackey now because we got we sprung from out some of Russian gangster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that was just like. Yeah. That was just like just nabbing one useless gonk from a Russian guy who probably didn't care that much. Not true. And I would freeing say freeing an entire that... slave workforce. And I would say freeing the guy from. Wait, hang on. Now I'm getting confused about what really happened and what was in the brain dance. But did freeing the guy from Arasaka's like, you know, Lotus machine, the first time? Did he actually help us out the second time? Was that just in the brain dance? You mean when we freed the uh, Arasaka guy from the Sanguinetti's? Yeah. That that came back to bite us because now we're working with Arasaka. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how we ended up in bed with Arasaka. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing so... we helped. No matter how much that guy helped us individually, whether it was real or not, we still had a net negative from that interaction. I I still say that's one for one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do they what do they what do they say? No good deed goes unpunished. 
true. That's... Yeah, do you want to be unpunished or do you want to be a cool person? <laughs> um, I think Bud wants to be unpunished. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Bud just wants to game. get on with his day. Son? <laughs> <laughs> You should have played Wanda Home. <laughs> yeah. What is this? Was this D&D? &D? We're big damn heroes. I don't think, I don't think so. We're yeah. big damn punks. <laughs> big damn punks. I love it. All right. I'm going to nip to Lou. Yeah. And I, my sirenscape's not working, which is unfortunate. I love the hot sand sound sets. Yeah, mine isn't working either. Yeah. I wasn't maybe sure if can... maybe it's because it's not too late. I don't know. Maybe he needs to regenerate a new link that we can all get into. So I don't know if you oh, can, you guys can hear it at home chat. That would be very important for you guys. Um, because you guys get the immersion. Maybe we can sort that out for ourselves before we go back. Oh, uh, I shall be back. I noticed that too.
Okay, I think my laptop shut down there briefly. But you're back now. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. I just got back and it was, it was all black and then I just had to like shut the lid for a second. Uh, so hopefully that hasn't messed everything up. Now Allie's but... dead. Oh no! That's, nice. why, that's why it was all black. <laughs> while you were gone. I didn't know that you could kill each other in the bathroom breaks. It's crazy. <laughs> what are the odds? That's a plot I, twist. I love, yeah, I love when um, Cyberpunk Red slowly transitioned to paranoia and we didn't even notice it. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's just using the whole other game system out here. <laughs> Uh, do I need an ice pack for my laptop? Uh, I think it would help in the short run, but in long term, it would probably hurt the laptop more. Yeah. I think, yeah, coming into these summer months, I probably just have to, like, try and cool my room before we stream. Uh, because it's just... It's a baby. Unless, hey, anyone wants to send me money and I'll I'll get a proper gaming setup. <laughs> it's a bold move. Let's see if it pays Laptop off. Laptop money. <laughs> if uh, anyone wants to send me any money to my PayPal. <laughs> Who's sending me money? Not you, money. Me, money. Oh, bugger. <laughs> No um, one. Did, and no one. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rob, did we? Did anyone let you know that we are having trouble hearing the Sirenscape that you're playing? Oh, really? Yeah, wondering if you could regenerate your your link, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, here I'll send it. Didn't again. want to in interrupt the game. I just assumed it was me, but if no one else is hearing, it's always you. <laughs> Even when oh. others are involved. Even when other oh. are involved. <laughs> There's I'm the link. The, uh... <laughs> see, if, see if that works. Yeah, see. I'm seeing the sound bars coming up now. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ooh. Got some hot zone ambiance. It kind of looks like, you know, the like Night City has just crashed into your home, Brendan. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought like it someone would... just Kool Aid man through your <laughs> through, through your walls. <laughs> that's what I choose to think. And now you've just got this gaping hole. That that's Rush. Out that's Rush. The... That's how Rush enters the game. He's just like, oh yeah, and he just breaks oh, through. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, he, 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 he goes through a wall. Meowdy. Meowdy. Oh shit! I forgot about that. I didn't even write that down in my notes. I should have absolutely written that down in my notes. Meowdy. All right. Meowdy. Are we getting back to it, or how's everyone feeling? I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. We're still with it? All right, let's do it then. We're with it. Hip with it. Hey, with we're back. It. Everyone can see us now. They can hear us all the time. Now they can see us. Uh, thanks, chat, Hello. for hanging out and uh, uh, not going anywhere during our little five-minute break. Um, we're back at it right where we left off. Uh, the team basically peeling out, bud, kicking up a little bit of gravel into uh, Troy as the nomads get back to doing what they're doing and all these workers get back to doing what they're doing. But as you're pulling off and kind of heading south um, through these rubble streets, uh, you do see a couple of those um, rec reclaimer looking guys, these radiation hazmat suit workers kind of like looking desperate, like as you go, like trying to like make eye contact and like, uh, like, uh, help this sort of desperate oh, feel damn as, you, it. as you're driving off uh, Hades rush. Um, I think it was you two that noticed that, if I'm not mistaken. Or no, it was, uh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, Russian I, Hades. I definitely did not notice. Yeah, so you're pulling off. You just noticed that as Bud kicks up gravel. I'll let you all take it from there. Oh, damn it. You've got to be kidding me. What? What? Uh, <laughs> he's going to... And Hades now is using the gun just instead of using, like, a finger to point at things. <laughs> like, swings <laughs> a gun around. Hey, whoa, he's... whoa, 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 babe. <laughs> you see how, you see those guys over there? The, the yeah. ones we just passed, yes. I yeah, see not the jerk, but the other ones. Ah, Very they're... much too late to get our money back. Oh, the techies. No, yeah, they're... I don't know, I think they might have been tech-napped or something like that. They're looking all 
Upset. Oh no! Anyway. What? What? Are you thinking we should stop Hades or? No! When I looked over here with those big, like, kitten eyes, it makes you feel bad. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, they're probably in a not great situation. I mean, neither are we. Yeah. Uh, when they can pay us, we will right every wrong in Night City. I mean, there are more of them than there are of the nomads. Well, plus uh, we don't you know if do they cool have speech? money. I'm just <laughs> saying, coup to electric boogaloo. Electric anyway, uh, hold on. Could have Terrain's money. about to get rough. <laughs> the nomads could have money or other things. <laughs> yeah, we could just steal back our money. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Now that's you're like talking. Four well, exactly. thousand eddies. And the tech guys outnumber the nomads, and they're the ones with all the tech. We outnumber the nomads too in coolness. <laughs> One <laughs> a suicidal job at a time, please. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, you're starting to uh, come up to a part of the road that's definitely broken up as if something underneath has shifted or pushed the road up uh, along the ru rubble and things that are on the hot zone side as you're coming around. You've got to kind of maneuver, maneuver um, the dune buggy up, up sideways, up, up along this thing, almost, almost like a, a ramp to get up around this rubble to kind of keep going to get around to the south side of this hot zone. I'll need a land vehicle test from you, bud. Okay, let's take. Uh, how, how difficult is this 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 role particularly? Is this an early, not this very hard, a, or this is a DD getting, getting tough now? Oh, is this not too bad? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just whack in a couple of points of luck for this one. I mean, we did. Yeah, we did go for the uh, the easier ground. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there might be multiple. It, it might get harder as we go in. So I just want to mm. like pass that on my luck. You know, I've got five to spend. I don't want us to get bogged down at the first instance, but I just want to save some luck. So I've added two. Dry land vehicle. And I got a one. Oh. It's Whoa. my third one today. What is that? That's rough. Yeah, as you're coming Maybe around. Maybe Fantasy Grounds is mad at us. <laughs> yeah, as you're, as you're coming around, uh, you come up the corner, you try to like ramp up above this rub rubble, and it kind of slides out, almost kind of spinning you a bit. And... You kind of wreck down on the side of the doom buggy along all this rubble as everyone's kind of rocked to one side. Um, and everyone basically takes some damage here. Uh, give me one second. Okay, I got it. I don't got it. Oh, got it. hold on, hold on. Wanna go uh, easy four, on the brakes there? Yeah, 14 points of damage uh, reduced by your SP. Um, but everyone in this basically gets the whiplash uh, critical injury oh, uh, from no. this, which which isn't as bad as it sounds because all that really does is raises your uh, your base death save, which can suck if you get in those moments. But it at least doesn't like imp if, impede if things yeah. when when that happens. Uh, but till then, uh, you're still alive currently. Uh, no, and there's yeah, there's there's not a lot of things that it impedes or it adds any negatives to. Um, you can mm -hmm. fix it with a DV13 paramedic um, to kind of get a temporary uh, uh, sort of uh, fix on it or uh, surgery for a more permanent. Um, so you could attempt that if anyone has that, but I believe you don't. Uh, you don't really have a med tech with you. Um, but yeah, you're at least That's uh, fine. a med tech. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, at least took Ow. a little bit of damage, and yeah, got some got some hurt necks right now. Bud, what are you doing up there? Ah, uh, just this the rock came out from under the wheels. I'm sorry. Is everyone okay? Definitely wasn't trying to do a cool little ramp My over neck that hurts. section. <laughs> Maybe we should leave the style for moments when it's you know can actually be seen by people yeah okay i'll be more careful uh let's see can i get it is it's not stuck i can keep going yeah it's still it's still oh, maneuverable yeah okay so i'm gonna edge it out of this whatever kind of like incline that we're on find a bit of more flat ground to start you know weaving it over uh, and I'll, I'll continue to you hear all the rocks kind of <laughs> scraping the side of the dune buggy 
kind of digging into the chrome. Like you do get up out of it, eh, rush, it's not so shiny and pretty anymore on that side. I'm just gonna look at him like. Sorry. <laughs> it's alright, I still love you, Chum. I know, man. We can, we can get Pox to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> makes it so much worse. He's just, he's disappointed. He's not yeah, angry. I know, right? Oh, God. <laughs> well, we s still got a, a few clicks to the basement of the Arasaka building, so I think it's only going to get worse, so. Well, Hold on. Just drive carefully. Yeah, I'm going to get us as close as I can. <sighs> Hold on. I'm just going to, like, you know, grab Hades extra tight <laughs> in the meantime. Yeah, you're able to. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, you're able to get up out of that uh, sort of patch of rubble and kind of continue on at the south bend side of the hot zone. Um, now kind of coming up to where the park kind of separates from the hot zone where you see it, it's rebuilt, still in use um, for the most part, the, the north side of it, kind of the uh, northern eastern side of the park. Um, it's all kind of caved in. You can, you can see it kind of goes down to like a sub-level. Um, but you can also see that there's like a bunch of water down there. It's hard to tell what, what exactly is going on, but it kind of, the earth kind of opens up at a slant kind of towards the hot zone. And you can, you can see like stagnant water, a uh, very black brackish style water, just, just kind of sitting down there. Um, you see some piping, um, you can see, even see the occasional spark, uh, from things kind of, uh, uh, still working through piping and through the earth parts where this is broken up. Um, but as you kind of come around to that side, you can see where uh, you can kind of turn on what used to be a main park road uh, to kind of head into the hot zone. Um, and it's just barely wide enough that you can get through it with the dune buggy. Oh, hang on. I'm just, I need to take a couple of shots. This is kind of rad. Hang on. Hey, hey. Put my hands on the wheels. <laughs> oh, sorry. Take we were two we stopped. We were stopped. Who saw you drive? <laughs> I mean, how many times do you get to go to the hot zone? The dune buggy oh. rides off into that crevice into the water. He's like taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need to put this on my garden page. No one's gonna believe me. Uh, maybe your maybe it's gonna explode if you take it out here. Come on, man. Oh, maybe true. in the interim, okay. I'll uh, start recording a, a BD, just of like cool, driving yeah. at high high speeds, and I'll I'll flick it to Bud later. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you're coming up. Uh, POV of the back of your own head as you ride a dune buggy. <laughs> yeah, you're coming up uh, through that kind of narrow spot. Um, and you can see where, like, it, it's in between two buildings. Can't tell what they are, but the one to the right just kind of is all collapsed and rubbled across what was this narrow pathway as you're kind of getting up uh, to where the, the rubble crosses over this, like, alley looking spot that you're driving through um but as you kind of get up there you can see like old abandoned cars like half smashed in between this building and rubble um you can see some old dumpsters like completely collapsed in from the rubble you can barely squeeze the doom buggy uh past this point but now you're up to a point where like you can see all the building scraps and rubble and things just so destructive and just so piled on top of itself um, there's no way that you could drive forward um, through this uh, further into the hot zone um, but you okay. can you can still kind of go a little more towards the west where it's kind of curving southwest um, but it's also would kind of us, would that get us like in total closer to our destination um, it could it's hard to tell uh, you know at this point you would have to either you know, go forward and try to climb over rubble and, you know, take it by foot, or you mm. can continue driving kind of this narrow path uh, across kind of the north side of the park where it's kind of collapsed down. You're kind of on the north side of that now because you've passed that through that alley. Um, so you can keep going around and look for maybe a different pathway in, or you can kind of uh, stop where you're at now. You'd have to uh, head on foot. But those are kind of your only two options because uh, of, of all the rubble and the way this road narrows. Mm. Well, guys, I, I, I can't take it over that. Uh, if we're going to keep going, we, we need to, to find a way around, or we can go as the crow flies uh, on foot from here. What do you think? Why the hell would a crow fly on foot? You know what? It's not important. <laughs> well, I think 
we so long as we can find a place to put it where those guys won't somehow find it or somebody else find it and hotwire it and drive it away or pick it up mm. and carry it away or dig a hole and whisk it away yeah is there a good place to stash it we could kind of do a little dig out or is there a tarp in the back or something we look around for like some some sort of shell of a building we can we can park it into. Yeah, let's say uh, let's have Bud and Allie each do a one d ten and see if it's under their luck stat to see if you know a couple things. If either of you find Allie looking for tarps or debris to put over it, uh, Bud looking uh, for one, some type one of over my place luck. to pull in. This is mine. <laughs> one over your luck too. Yeah, I've only got two luck, so the chances oh, okay. were slim. The chances yeah, you're, were very slim. Yeah, you're, in this this part of the city, it's just like all rubble and, you know, mm. crushed in vehicles, dumpsters, things. You can tell that this was an alley at one point, but it looks like it might have broken through the other side from the building, half collapsing. Um, but, like, you would either need to kind of leave it here. There's really nowhere to pull it in or cover it. Mm. Or, you know, continue that south road around... Um, something along those lines. And You're really lacking options, unfortunately, yeah. If there's nowhere to conceal it here, I, I agree with Hades that it, we're pretty much, like, gifting those those bastards our car. Uh, I think we should just take it... We, I think we should just take it as far as we can take it, okay. right? I'll, Not to I'll, mention, yeah. without Kenji, we're gonna need to be getting our asses out of here by ourselves. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, let, me, uh, let me keep navigating, then. Uh, I'll see if I can get us any closer to... Uh, to the mission site. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna. Everyone have your eyes out. Yeah, and check if we're being followed okay. as well. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't hey, hey, <laughs> Hades Rush Alley. Give me a perception as you kind of look out as Bud says, make sure we're not being followed. Alley says, you know, let's keep our eyes peeled for any yeah. hazards and things. As Bud kind of eyes on the road, trying to maneuver down the super narrow thing, trying not to scratch up the vehicle anymore, getting around this this corner, coming around the north side of the park. Um, you, Bud, you do see some of the earth kind of shifting as you're going across it um on the on the north side of this park that's kind of hovering over what sunk into that sort of water crevasse so like you yeah. know like you're, you're you're treading on some thin earth here um and and you need to kind of get around to where this road curves to the right and you can see it kind of heads into the hot zone a little bit um but it yeah. is it's going to be a driving land vehicle dv of 15 to kind of maneuver uh through this loose ground to get to that opening I will take a plus two. Yeah, take it. And we'll the last, and the last three of my luck. <laughs> and yeah, um, so you're, that you're... makes it a plus five. And as Bud's making that maneuver, uh, Hades and Alley and, and Rush, you kind of look around. Rush a, a little too preoccupied. You see Rush kind of like trying to look around, but but he keeps like checking on the vehicle and Bud's driving, making sure it's not getting any more scratched up. Like he's just not. <laughs> perceptive enough on the right things right now you can tell he's got other things on his mind but hades and alley absolutely you can you can see uh you know the hot zone around you the back alley you're not being followed um but one thing that you do see is there's like these sunflower tags kind of put on the side of this building that when you when you went down this alley and you went off to the left on the side of the park that building to the left has these like spray painted sunflower uh tags on the building um, and you notice that as you're curving around as Bud makes it. And Bud, absolutely, you get past the 26. edge of the park and you see some of the road even kind of cave in on the edge and make a big splash in that open crevice where all the, the water was. And you just basically peel out enough to get around it and around the road as a, a majority of that earth just kind of collapses into the water. Um, but you just you just got past that without breaking through and sinking in. Is anybody else seeing these tags? I think there's yeah, a hippie the gang over here or something. Yeah, the sunflowers? Does that ring a bell with ev anyone? Sunflower uh, not since I was or... 12. Everyone, I... Yeah, do a 1d10. Now give me a 1d10. Let's do a rep check. Okay, rep check. Yeah. Is that everyone or just Bud? Everyone, everyone, yeah. Now that you pointed it out and you mentioned it out loud. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> what was I trying to roll? Usually under their reps under. to recognize them. Oh, Higher yeah. their reps, the more recognizable they are. Yeah, so, so. yeah, when, when you point that out and you mention it, um, Ali, like, you you say, you know, does anyone recognize this? And, you know, it, nothing's coming to mind, but Rush, um, it, it pops into your head. Um, that's the tag of the Terra Novas. Um, they, they were an enclave. You weren't even sure if they were real. 
Um, but they were a bit of a, a sort of enclave uh, group that kind of started post Fourth Corporate War. Um, a little info that kind of pops up, and I'll, I'll just get it straight. And a shout out to PWB, part of my Patreon, uh, helping kind of uh, uh, concise some of this, along with Stink Palm. Uh, Stink Palm, part of the Patreon, also one of our fellow GMs at Cybernation Uncensored, uh, uh, helping create some of this lore with me. And I, I was able to pull some of that from him. So let's dive in. Let's have a little fun. But um, Rush, yeah, you recognize him as Terra Nova, basically. Um, uh, a techno-humanist enclave uh, formed in the wake of the Fourth Corporate War by scientists and techs uh, that were convinced that technology could correct the damage brought on by, by the war. Um, to this end, uh, they formed an agricultural and research compound in the hot zone to cleanse it of radiation and uh, feed those left behind. Um, they have some success. Uh, they have decontaminated their compound. You're not sure where it is or anything about it, really. Uh, but you have heard rumors of that, that they have had some success, and that's why they've been sticking to it for the most part. God, uh, <laughs> and Terra Nova has also been known to hydroponically grow uh, sunflowers to decontaminate de 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 uh, their wear supplies as well as sunflowers oh, planted in the ground to clear radiation from the soil. Additionally, they cultivate uh, some species of dark mushrooms called uh, midnight mushrooms, which uh, can you are used to, uh, radiation, uh, to take radiation um, out say? of the land and as a... Uh, anti-radiated food source um, for them while they're this in the hot zone. Punks. Um, this so punks. That's so awesome. So I love yeah, so Rush, Rush knows about this. Unfortunately, that's them enslaved by the uh, the RCR, so... What did yeah. I say? Hippies cannot so. take care of themselves. Everyone knows this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't... I'll relay can't all of this information to the team. Wow, that's a lot of really... Uh, Deep just... rich lore. <laughs> it's so beautifully, so beautifully told. Yeah, everyone's, on the, say, yeah. everyone's yeah. on the same. It's amazing. Yeah, everyone's on the same page now. You know, Russia. You know, absolutely has heard of them. He wasn't sure that they were real, but obviously, seeing the tags and now it's clicking like those scientist, techie-looking people and all the suits working out of the hot zone, working for those uh, RCR nomad family. Like it's all kind of clicking now, you know. And then them looking all desperate and stuff. Like it's you're connecting the dots. Yeah. That, uh, too bad. That sucks. That sucks for them. They're doing good work out here, and then they're getting exploited. <laughs> I wonder when once RCR have taken what they want and they move on, they'll they'll leave the guys here to carry on. Or they'll or kill them. What kill are, them or take them? Or take Rush, them with them. Rush would know kind of how uh, the RCRs work. How, what they typically do like obviously they've been known to enslave labor and things when they need to get into areas to get things done so they don't get their hands there but how do they typically leave it with the enslaved do they usually like you know no witnesses left behind or they just kind of let them go and move on to their next thing or what do you think russia what do you know about rcr um if something has value they're going to get every eddy out of it that they can so keep i think if, if they can't keep using the slaves, then they'll try selling the slaves, which is unfortunate. Ah, oh, that's so unsavory. I'm sorry. <laughs> In fact, some of it kind of clicks it sure to rush. Is like unsavory. So, some of the rumors are even passed through the high water citadel back in the day. Um, like little little throwbacks to other uh, slave trade, you know, human trafficking issues and stuff that you guys kind of had to deal with in the past, right? Um, but yeah, mm. uh, you kind of know that about these nomads. They're not good people. Yeah, yeah, none I of really, this sits right with me. Yeah, I oh, really wish we could speak about it. I really do. But we can't. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it, we can do whatever be... the hell we want now. I know. And if we don't do anything, it's like we're saying they should be doing what they're doing. I mean the bad ones, not the ones growing all the hip flowers and whatnot. And it would be real nice to be able to make sure that this gun works. You know, test it. And this one, big gun. <laughs> Plus, we, uh, maybe we can get the Terra Novas. Oh my God, sorry, Terra Novas. Thank you, American accent. Um, to to help us out with the, uh, you know, getting. Have we still got the the tracking stuff in us? Or did we get that deactivated? I, I think mean, we're still. What, we're we're tracking. What do you mean tracking things? Remember, getting pricked <laughs> was part of a brain dance, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, you must be referring to the metallic substance you all drink. Yes. yes. 
Yeah. Oh, Guys, that. we're still in deep shit. Uh, we have actually no plan on getting out, apart from we would need some pretty tech-heavy people. This hey, is all, look. This is all great and high-minded, Ali, but there's four of us and a big gun, and yes, it is a very big gun. But it's it, so it, big! It is a whole nomad clan. Like, 50 guys back there. Just the guys hanging out on the road were the people who didn't have anything better to do. We barrel in there with one buggy and a gun. We're going to have crossfire from, like, 60, 100 guys. This is a whole clan. It's not like, you know, some gonks. I, I, I get the instinct. I don't like it any more than you guys do, but I don't see how taking those guys head on is going to help anybody out. So we don't well, take them head on. Think of a plan. I'm yeah. not being high-minded. We need resources. And yeah. hey, the Terra Novas clearly are, can be pushed around. I'm not saying that, you know, we're going to be assholes about it. But we but might we be. We do them a good turn. There's lots of them. They might be able to help us out. Plus, screw these, uh, um, <laughs> screw these chromers. We've already <laughs> tried going up against bigger fish. And yeah, uh, plus, Rush has a plan, right, Rush? Yeah, Rush has a plan. Rush always has a plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, my plan was find a choke point, funnel them all through it, and shoot them like fish in a barrel. That's, That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, took good... the words right out of my mouth. And we but... do the first leg of the mission without complications first, and then no! we can, we can, because if we get, if we get in the ish before we've actually done what we've come to do, it's gonna make it exponentially more difficult to even find the entrance to Mikoshi and get the data we need. What do we reckon? And then we can do what you want to do after. <laughs> I mean, Bud's making sense. Mm. And maybe we should just work on this plan a little bit more while we're doing the job. And then on our way hey. out, maybe pop a couple of chooms, you know? Happy with that. But I'm saying we don't have a plan for what happens after this. And I think the Terra Nova's. Oh my god, Terra Novas could be a good way of helping us sneak out of Arasaka's view. Well, look, you, you, you stop talking, I'm, I'm half convinced, okay? If, if you, you keep on, <laughs> you, you might reverse course. <laughs> uh, I give Bud a shove. <laughs> Just Not being in practical. Anyway. <laughs> When's been practical ever helped us out? <laughs> Nothing ever helps us out. True. Uh, I, right. got us, I got us around the park, and we're not in the drink, the radioactive drink. Uh, so I, I think we can get at least a little bit closer to a um, particular patch of rubble we're looking for. Yeah, you come around the corner, uh, you pass that, that building with the sunflower tags, you pass the, the top of the park that's kind of caved in into this water, and you, you get up on this, this sort of northway street um, that's leading kind of deeper into the heart of the, the hot zone. Um, and as you come around that corner, you can see it used to be a road that kind of would go up ramp um, to the main sort of corporate center circle. Um, that, that is obviously no longer there. You can see up ahead, it's you know, there's rubble, there's half buildings, or it's just hard to see. You still have the big sort of hanging smog, cloud dust bowl sort of thing going on with winds whipping. Um, but as you get up into this road, um, you can see where the ramp kind of like goes up. And then you can see to the left, it kind of opens up into a parking garage. Um, other than that, you're just at the bottom of this road where it goes forward just past that ramp, um, and then it ends in all that rubble. Um, so you're, uh, once again, you're in a situation where you're kind of lacking places to hide the vehicle. Um, the only thing that, that you know looks open would be that parking garage up, up that sort of ramp um, that is broken uh, where it would normally be the big circle in the corporate center. It kind of curves off to the left still into that parking garage. Uh, garage. The, the road is a bit shaky and broken. It would definitely be a land vehicle check to get it up in there. Uh, but if you were successful with that, it would be a place to kind of 
tuck the vehicle away um, in that parking garage and keep it out of view. Otherwise, we could do another luck check to see if Allie or anyone's lucky enough to find things to throw over it and then leaving it out in the street but covered with things. A little less uh, hidden, but at least hidden more, more than just being out in the open, right? Um, so you kind of have these options. Uh, what is everyone thinking? Like Yo, some, someone passed a luck check, though. It was me. <laughs> Glad to know one of us is lucky. <laughs> yeah, so Hades, well, while, while you're kind of looking at the ramp... Yeah. From her jacket, just like one of those ghillie suit things, but really big. Hey, well, look at what I have here. <laughs> <laughs> Rush real camouflage. <laughs> yeah, R Rush, Rush and Bud realizing that they, they were looking for something earlier and Hades had something this whole time. But um, yeah, while, <laughs> while Bud's kind of looking at the ramp and judging, you know, do I have enough drive skill to get up in that, that garage to hide it? Or would we be lucky enough to just leave it covered out here in the street? And it's covered at least enough to be out of view. You know, you at least have these options because now Hades has this cover that she found. So you have options. What What is the team thinking? I think. Uh, Thanks, PWD. What? Keep it Keep it simple. Park the car in a garage. In a garage. How do you say garage? Like that. Garage. 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 With, with your American accent, or. <laughs> yeah. Garbage. <laughs> It's, the thing about having to roll to get it in well, there. It's a shed, okay? It's a shed. <laughs> in the shed. <laughs> the Garage. thing about rolling to get in there is that we'd have to roll to get back out. And if we we're speedily trying to get away, that may be a problem. Garage. Garage is down. Garage. <laughs> That's how they say it in the south of England. Let's uh, just how how the car. big jump is it into the garret? Into the garage? <laughs> Not me doing it. It's a garage. structure. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, to get it, yeah, yeah, to make it up on this ramp uh, through the kind of uh, broken ray, it would be a DV-15. Um, so it would be a My... DV-15 to get up in there, but um, it would absolutely uh, increase the DV that someone would need to break with their perception to find it versus it's if it's car, just right. covered out in the street, a much, much lower DV for someone to realize that's just a, a vehicle covered in something. But it's still a possibility. It would still be covered, and you'd have a DV to beat. But obviously, up in the garage is way better. Um, but it is a DV. Okay, I mean, we could do both <laughs> in yeah. the garage and covered. But follow-up yeah. question: If I fail this roll, what happens? Uh, well, uh, again, <laughs> you, we die. die. Yeah, you know, you would you would fail going up the ramp. You would either ride off the edge. It would break. Something would collapse. You know, you would still be hit with uh, more whiplash would increase another yeah. plus two to your be base <gasps> death save, drives the car plus you would take a little bit of damage. You know, just like the previous... I uh, wreck the car completely, right? Uh, yeah, it would just depend on the amount of damage. Uh, you, you, the, the, oh, and maybe I didn't go over this, but it has an SDP How many uh, ones have you rolled? Did you hear it? Uh, th three. I've, I've, uh, SP of 40, yeah, yeah. yeah it's got a structural, SP, 40 yeah. structural points. Did yeah. it take... Did it take damage from the previous accident? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it took a little so bit. Us. Okay, it took a bit. Okay. Um, well, look, I have a base of 12. So it's a 15. I have to get three and up. I can take a plus two. I'm sure we've got one left. There's one, a few like 20 minutes ago, was that there was a plus two. Yeah, so. we've got one. Yeah, there's one here. There's one here. I'm, just, I'm going to ride up there, um, and we. I'm not going to roll a one. It's going to be great. And then we're going to also put the top of it, and it's going to, like, I mean, like, it, very it's hidden. not a balcony, so you should do fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shots fired. Oh, never live it down. <laughs> no! My dude. Are you serious? What? God! Dudes, what did I say? What did I say? Oh, man. Hope you enjoyed that car uh, rush. Uh, it was what nice while it lasted. This I decided to name her Susie. Um, what the hell? better be working on that freaking car, I tell you right now. He that is four, four he critical failures. Yes. Pox needs to start dri driving to meet us yesterday. Yeah, the, the vehicle, as you're kind of going up the ramp, um, you, you distinctly hear uh, the cracking of concrete and whatever uh, structure this ramp is made out of um, that is broken going around the city sort of corporate center. Um, you see it kind of cracking down from there and coming down the ramp as you kind of step on it to try to get into the garage, but just not quick enough as the crack comes through and the, the ramp absolutely collapses and the, the whole doom buggy <laughs> just drops down, um, just hitting the ground so hard that everyone, again, gets another plus one of their base death Nothing. save with 
their whiplash neck just getting whiplashed even more. Um, everyone's necks are kind of crimp, crimped and cramped. And uh, you take 17 points of damage. Um, don't forget to ablate by your armor. However, I forgot to mention this earlier. Anytime you take damage, uh, these hazmat suits uh, get ripped and messed up. These radiation Daddy. suits. So you all are down now 8 of the 10 patches because you each had to use one for the prior damage. Now you each have to use one now. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you will take radiation damage when you hit those patches, which no one's checked the Geiger yet. But luckily you haven't had... Uh, ripped suits, uh, but now you've just ripped them again. So again, 17 points of damage, deduct your SP, just, oh ablate your armor, <laughs> and then uh, reduce the amount of patches you have by another four, Alley. I think leaving you guys with two patches left now. Yeah, we got two patches. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 17 minus armor is... And then... Uh, good session, everybody. I'm logging off now. Um... <laughs> Honestly, bud, I think you should just stay outside. <laughs> yeah, now I know why they were laughing at us when we pulled up in our oh, doom buggy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, can everyone move their neck? Because uh, I can't. <laughs> I don't think I'm getting up in the garage, though, so I think we just need to cover the vehicle and, uh... Ow! Uh, go on foot. Is Hold on. Yeah. Is this one of those garages that has underground garage parking that... It sure does we, now. We <laughs> could... That we've fallen through the goddamn earth. I'm just thinking about driving this baby out of here and, uh... <laughs> and, and, and later, maybe not now. Because right I... now, this car has been nothing but pain. <laughs> yeah, there's no uh, underground sort of garage or spot spot to pull this in uh, just because of the wreckage. I mean, this this parking garage probably absolutely had sub, sub levels and other, other levels, but just from the amount of damage uh, from the, the fourth corporate war and explosion and things, um, there's just no we'll access. Chuck top of it. We'll pile some rubble like around the foot of it, chuck some, you know, some dust and stuff over it, try and integrate it into the landscape it's, yeah yeah that sound good yeah <laughs> morale's really just taking a huge hit <laughs> yeah you're all piling it up uh and i'll, I'll take a everyone give me a stealth and i'll take the highest stealth for your vehicle dv ah, my time to shine 20. Nice. That's great. Oh, nice. Rush. Very nice. You just had to do one better, didn't you? <laughs> hey, and Bud says, Oh uh, my god, that's three nines. Yeah. No, there you go. Where is stealth? Uh, in uh, a body, body skills. The body second skills. group, yeah. <laughs> Conceal? Rufio says, Oh, oh now yes. Bud rolls good. I yeah. mean, you, you're not trying to steal. What? I'm calling it. Too many nines. Fantasy grounds is messed up. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. That's... This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> random. So you get but weird look, stuff. Um, but yeah, collectively you gather up some debris and rubble and some rocks. You pile it up. Hades throws that big tarp she had. Um, and you, you basically cover everything up. And collectively you're able to at least hide it enough. It doesn't look like a, just a vehicle under a tarp now. Like it's kind of hard to tell what's going on there the average person walking by they're gonna have to beat a dv of 21 perception to be able to to find this thing so that was actually really good um as far as stealthily uh, getting that vehicle hidden um okay really important a, i'm gonna drop a pin on my agent so that we know where gonna, it is i was gonna say it's Perfect. really important that we remember where we parked now remember we parked next to the giant pile of rubble <laughs> 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 Well, thanks for narrowing that down. And then, uh, yeah, you're kind of uh, covering it up and um, uh, getting getting it all, uh, uh, you know, situated. And now you're on foot, kind of entering the hot zone. Um, you've got your radiation suits on, all patched up, and you start about to kind of make your way into it. Um, but everyone, give me a perception. Yeah, I was gonna say well, before we head off, I would scout for sure. There's no way I'm moving moving on from from this position without. Without a good scout. 
Why you have a solo Go with to concert? Ah, on the left. Yeah, I'm. Uh, my right. eyes are a little bit misty. Because so. <laughs> of your car. Your poor, poor oh, yeah. vehicle. Just purchased it today. 17. Just purchased it today. Yeah. It's it's first birthday. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, oh, it's not going to make it to his tomorrow. first birthday. But yeah, you're looking around. Um, you know, it's it, the the typical weather and wind and, and issues of of hot zone are just kind of taking over the area, um, and you're focused on on trekking up ahead, which looks like um, up ahead you're going to have a couple options. It looks like um, you know where the buildings kind of collapse and the big sort of highway. Um, that was stacked up going around the central corporate area that collapsed down. You can see kind of where the inner rubble of buildings were, possibly kind of where the Arasaka Towers were and have collapsed. And Rush can kind of confirm that on the tracker that, yep, that's you know straight ahead. We're heading straight into the hot zone. But you're at this point where, like, you can kind of go down to the right and kind of go, um, you know, underneath these buildings that are kind of collapsed on each other and kind of work on a more ground level. Or you can kind of... Uh, kind of climb up on top of the building that's collapsed on the one to the right and kind of work, uh, you know, a little bit higher up in a little higher ground around the left side. Uh, still both working their way into the center, following the tracking beacon. But again, two options. To the right, that goes kind of below the two buildings collapsed in between, or to the left, kind of up and on top of the building around. Both of which look like it'll require a little bit of climbing, a little bit of athletics to get through. It's not like walking the normal sidewalk. But those are your options. And while you're kind of looking at that and you're kind of deciding on what to do, uh, Bud, once again, you're getting the feeling like somebody's staring at you. And just off to the side in, in that, that building along the alley on the opposite side of the parking garage, you can see, um, you know, right up, you know, it's a little bit above ground just because of where the building shifted. Um, you can see kind of in the doorway uh, two people kind of like creeping, looking, and watching you guys. Um, and they're both wearing the, the sort of all white. Um, radiation hazmat suits. They absolutely look um, like those Terra Nova people um, that you saw up with the nomads at the entrance of the hot zone. Hey. Well. Hey, 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 hey. What? Don't what? look down. Terra, two Terra Nova gonks in the. Don't look! In the building on our right. Just spotted How us. How am I but... supposed to see where they are if I don't look, bud? This is not uh, for anyway. Uh, <laughs> Terra Nova, you say? Yeah, two guys, white hazmat suits. They're just peeking out the doorway up there on the right while we're uh, scouting ahead. Do you want to okay. call out to them? What do you want to do? Hey! Call out. Hey! There's your answer. There's your answer. <laughs> what do you want? Um, yeah, you That's see. That's what Hades does. Yeah, you see both of them. Yeah, the second you you. you say that you see Hades kind of like yell it out as you three are deciding what to do and you see those two kind of like look in a panic and like duck back into the building and like peek out again and duck back hey you're not, not stealthy I can see you we're not here for you you come out of there right now or I'll shoot you in the face uh she's joking uh, yeah you <laughs> I'm see I'm not joking <laughs> You see uh, two guys kind of uh, walk out, or a guy and a female uh, come walking out wearing those radiation suits, and they just look terrified, and they have their hands up. One of them has one of those um, micro sort of, uh, uh, what, what are they called, the uh, uh, micro Waldo tech hands, um, one of those new ones. Got that? At all? And, and the girl has the, the eyes, and uh, what was that, bud? Are they armed at all? No, no, they walk out, uh, just hands up, and stupid? <laughs> look terrified, and they kind of walk out, and they look well, at each other. now I feel bad. I guess they were scouting us out. Hey, hey, you're not armed? No, no, uh, uh, just working. Okay, for future reference, you should really either get armed or pretend to be armed, but either way, we're not here to mess around with you guys. We're trying to find something. Uh, yeah, does, why are you peeking at us? That's anyone, creepy. Anyone have cyber audio suite at all? No. No, no uh, I just got right. recording no. software. All right, yeah, give me a regular perception uh, DV of uh, 20. Okay. That's better. 24. Okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, but you hear, like, uh, yeah, as you say that, and you know, uh, Hades and Allie are kind of 
both kind of chiming at them about, you know, come out, we won't shoot you, you know, what are you doing here? Um, you know, we're just working, we're not here for you. And they're both saying that they, they both kind of like look at each other and lean in. And But you can hear them very quietly, like under their breath, the male says to the female, I, I, I don't think they're with them. I I don't think they're with them. I, I, I no, we're know. not with RCR. We're not with RCR. Uh, you, you know, you know them? We did we, see we, him. Yeah, we came past them all the way in. We saw a bunch of your guys um, doing coerced labor for them. Yeah. Yeah. I threatened. said we should save them, is what I said. <laughs> he shoots a look at Bud. She they, did say uh, that. Yeah, they threatened to give us a rough, rough time, but we, uh, we bribed them and we, we passed our way through. The female leans in uh, to him, I, I, and Bud, you hear her say, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe they can help us. She said they wanted to help us. Maybe, maybe they'll help us? I, I don't know. There's only four of them. I, this is, I, I don't know. Kind of and a big gun. Hey, a very big gun. Uh, we've uh, we've gone up, up against some pretty heavy hitters. Do you want to come down and talk? I mean, it's not like you're going to shoot us from up there anyway. Okay, can we lower our hands? Sorry. Sure, yeah. sure. We'll no! Rounds and stuff as well. Yeah. I don't, no, we don't keep them up! We're, we're, we're at our most snarky, so we probably don't look that threatening, because I imagine we're just all kind of like <laughs> standing we're around, just, kind of oh like. Oh, yeah, and you're a little beat up. Man, right? so, oh, yeah. We're not, <laughs> we're not our normal intimidating selves. We're all, we, we're all in we hazmat. Just, we did spring for nicer hazmat suits, it's so true. Maybe, they, maybe they look a bit more cool. Well, yeah. and now they're kind of beat up and patched up, though, now. Um, so you guys are kind of... Now they look super cool. Yeah, yeah, now you look extra cool. But no, yeah, you, you do that, you kind of call them over, you, you you know, give a little peaceful vibe to them, and they accept, you know, they whisper to each other, like, I don't know, maybe we can trust them, maybe they can help us, and they, they start walking down towards you, um, and the female steps up, um, she says, Hi, I'm, I'm Carrie, this is Gregory, um, we're, we're with Terra Nova, have you heard of us? Yeah, a little no. bit here and there. <laughs> Why would you say no, Hades? We have. <laughs> Talked yeah, about them like, two minutes ago. Yeah, I told you minutes, everything I, I know. about them before that. If somebody says, Have you heard of them? I mean, you would think, like, you know, do you know them, like, from a personal standpoint? Not hearing it's like Lapinia Britannica over here. <laughs> you guys are trying to use biotech to clean up the hot zone, right? Yes, yes, we have. Gregory kind of speaks up. Yeah, we've been working on this since the fourth corporate war. We're a couple generations in, we've been trying to clean the hot zone and. We're, we're all independent. We've been doing this out of the good mission of our plans. I get but that. Some... You neglected security, unfortunately. We didn't think we yeah. needed it. We thought we could work and clean the land and no one would take advantage of us for that. It just... These people came in and now they're they're making us scavenge things for them. And they, they've they taken most of our tech that we've been working on. They, they've taken everything that we've been scavenging for our own progress and... and now they're having us scavenge things out of the old bank block, out of the old med center, and they're just using us to gather supplies right now, and it's... I, Buddy. It's, I don't know what to do. Where have you been... I'd say have you been living under a rock, but I guess... Yes. Gestures, <laughs> gestures to the hot zone. I mean, we've been hey, here look. for, you know, almost 20 years or more, and... 20 and years?! No, no one has... No one has... Mess with us once. We no one comes in the hot happen. zone, and with the work we're doing, I just that's because they don't didn't understand find why. you. Okay, it's not. Yeah. It's hey, look, it's very punk to be good, <laughs> but you just gotta make sure that you can defend yourself and keep doing good. Uh, and I don't know how much you know about life outside the hot zone, but not that he's not back yet. But uh, things are kicking up. They're starting to clear things from the outside in. Construction starting, so you're yeah. not going to be anonymous for not much longer. Well, good. Maybe the city will step in and see the progress we're making and no, will help. No, they won't. Yeah. No. People have yeah. been pushed to, to you know, not, not everyone gets nice after seeing the world end around them, all right? Well, sometimes thing, people get mean and rough, and you got to be able to roll with that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm obviously seeing that with these guys coming in, but you know, we've we've been able to make progress. We've decontaminated our own compound. We've found ways to clean some of the water and land and, and soil for regrowth, and 
we've been making progress beyond even what biotechnic has been able to do and i'm sure if, if we can keep working we'll make the progress that'll be permanent and the city won't well, be able to ignore that there, there's no way that what we're doing will just be buried but we can't They're do any of this if these guys it. keep controlling us i i don't know how we can get any more work done while do you have any slave labor do you have any firepower do you have any what ammo guns like your your tech people right you should be able to rig something together yeah, the, the most we ever have are our drones. You know, we, we've used our drones before just to protect us from, well, some scavers in the past have tried to steal from us, and we've, we've had our drones to help, but there, there's just not enough. There's not, you know, there, there was about 20 or 30 of these guys when they came in, and, you know, our our 10 drones, eight of them, two of them were down for maintenance. They just, they, they took them out quick. They've only got like 20 or 30 guys? Well, that's how many came oh, in. I mean, they, they have more than that, uh, but that's how many came in when they took over our compound. Okay. Oh, that's hardly a challenge, bud. We could have just gone in head on. Like, oh, yeah, but on the way out, I could told you, we need to get our job done first. Look, <laughs> if Rush, if Rush if you, you could sort these guys out with proper backing, right? If we could sort the situation out, you could make sure this city protects the work that they're doing, do you think? Look, if you can help us, we'll do, we'll do anything we can to pay you back. Uh, we, we don't have a lot, but we'll, you can tell they're kind of getting excited about okay. this option. Gosh, I mean, clean water at your next midnight night, like at your next next night market. That's That's got to go for some serious eddies. Uh, any any Maybe, tech work, too. The, we, problem uh, is, the problem is the connections I've got, you know, in the city. Uh, I mean, I can see what I could do, but I can't make promises. Come okay. on, making yeah. promises is your favorite thing. It, it, That's it, true. It, no, it, lying is my favorite thing. <laughs> and you're so good at it. <laughs> well, if you, if you can find any way to, to, to help free our community and help us, I, I, I promise you we'll do everything we can. We Look, we're, we're very, very experienced in any tech sort of work, med tech sort of work. The, the work we're doing here I, branches oh, sorry, beyond you, just you envi med tech? environmental changes and things we're working on. It, it, it branches beyond that. It's It's been our current focus, but obviously we're, we're a community of techs and med techs, and we can help in, in any way. We'll be indebted to you. Hey, yeah, imagine Hades has a question. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Uh, Gregory was, that's not a very hippie-like name, but uh, Gregory, did you say med tech? Uh, yes, our, our community is founded by techs and med techs and generations. Imagine that you swallowed a substance that's probably got so many nanobots in there that can be to track to you and kill you. Do you reckon you could yeah. get them out of a person? Uh, I, I, I'm sure. I mean, if, if it's any type of tech, we can we can control it. I'm, I'm positive. Any type. I mean, if you want to say that uh, you're right, Ali, your idea is a good one. I said it from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, but it's different coming from him. You love me. <laughs> yeah, you're right, bye. Ali. Oh, oh my goodness! I'm so glad that I'm still recording this. Oh, uh, don't yeah. worry. Also, I'll, and Carrie, I'll Carrie, me, Can yeah. one of you pop my neck? I've got like this thing going on right here. <laughs> Yeah, and while, Thankfully, while, all the chiropractors were purged. <laughs> you know, while you were talking about that, you know, Carrie leans in. Yeah, believe me, if there if there's any anything we can do, if you have some nano substance in you, we will do what we can to remove it. Just anything you can do to help our community. I, I, you have our, our word. You have will be indebted to you. I promise. And and yes, we can we can help with, with your neck. Gregory's a, a high ranked med tech. He has the experience. Yeah, l let me see. He starts messing with your necks. <laughs> Um, removing uh, your base death save cool. issue, um, oh, giving you nice. that, that sort of temporary fix. Okay, oh, all right. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Actually, I feel like it's can, mm. it feels weirdly, like my baby's neck. Weirdly, I feel like I'm, I can smell better. Yeah. <laughs> which is worrying. <laughs> Am I having a stroke? <laughs> Maybe I was having a stroke before, and these guys fixed it. Hell yeah. Love these so, guys. <laughs> 
how many of you guys managed to uh, evade the RCR? What kind of setup have you got left? Is it just a few of you? Do you still have a base? What's going on? Uh, our, our compound's right here. He points at the building where you saw the sunflowers tagged on the side of it that you passed on the edge of the, the uh, park where Ali saw the tag. Our compound's right here, but, I mean, they've raided it. We, we've been sleeping there and staying there overnight, but every day we have to check in with them and keep scavenging for them and i mean we have nothing left they destroyed our drones they've taken our equipment but again if you can free right. us and we can get our things back we can we can work and I we can you, help you. you but you guys also know this area real well huh uh, yeah to an extent yes i mean we've been working we on gotta, the south we end. got we got a gig that we got to handle it's very important okay there's some tech we got to get out from the rubble in that direction Okay. If you can help us uh, make our way safely through here, I mean, it just just for instance, I don't know whether we should go under that rubble and risk a cave-in or go over that rubble and risk being spotted in the open. So that's the kind of thing you could help us with. You can help us with that, and uh, uh, we get our job done. On the way out, maybe we help your people, and then you can uh, help us with our little medical issue. Uh, and you know it's a spirit of sweet cooperation and I'll look at the rest of the crew I do for... want to point out that when we were in the uh, not real world real world um, I did not fare well going over rough terrain no <laughs> no she no Hades did not <laughs> uh, but yeah but you, you, you say that you kind of give that proposal you kind of explain that Hades chimes in you give the look to the team they all seem to agree with this this option of kind of scratch my back, we scratch yours, and this sort of process. And you say all that, uh, you know, and, and Gregory, Carrie, look at each other. I, I mean, honestly, we we haven't even worked our way in, into the, the full hot zone, the center. We've been working on the south edge from our compound and branching from there. We've been making our way in because of RCR forcing us to scavenge. I, I can tell you this, if if pressed with an option like that, I, I, would, I would definitely, uh, you know, step over. Um, the higher ground uh, than the lower ground, at least then if, if there's any type of collapse or any issues, you might at least have less of a distance because you'll be on top of the rubble instead of underneath it. I, I'm sorry, I'm not much help with that. Look, I, that's cool, that's cool. You look like you've taken a, a little bit of a beating. I can at least help with this. Uh, uh, Carrie, grab my bag. Uh, she goes running in the you building. Wanna... What's that? Yeah. Hey, if you want to have a go at my back or anything else. <laughs> yeah, that well, was she, amazing. He says, uh, you know, maybe we can help with Honestly. something else. Carrie, go grab my bag. And she runs into the building and comes back out. And he, with this duffel bag, he kind of is rifling through. And he pulls out a, a, a few hypodermics. He has I have these air hypos. I have some speed heal. I've, I've, I've got five of them right here. I can use four of them on you right now. You look like you could use it. Uh, you beautiful, yeah. beautiful man. These cleat pay for themselves. <laughs> I think uh, I think I think the suit has an injection port right here, actually. Oh, perfect. Uh, he goes around to yeah. each of you and ch -ch 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 -ch, hits you each with an air oh. hypo, and it's <laughs> and it's speed heal. You get your body oh. stat plus your will in uh. HP direct back to your HP. So everyone should be pretty full Yay. now. Um, it's nice. You do have the <laughs> you do have the ablated armor from the past oh, yeah. two damages, and obviously yeah, you yeah, had to yeah. use eight of the ten patches. But at least now your HP should be back. At least your your body and yeah. will stat back. Hell yeah! But they but well, he, he yeah he injects you with that already. and says, "Look, I, it's the best we can do. I'm sorry I can't be more help with direction, but uh, look, we we've got to get back before they they realize we've been gone this long. Please help us when you're done." You know where to find us. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, do we, like, in our duffel bag, have any other, like, guns that we aren't really using? They can't use them even. If they get caught with the guns, the RCR yeah. are going to really mess them up. I don't think that's worth it. Um, but I'll if, tell if you they, what. If they could keep an eye on our car, that would be great. <laughs> You're right. When you're no, right, I was gonna you're say, right. I'll, I'll tell you what Hades does have. Uh, reach into this <laughs> officially Rush licensed fanny pack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and pull out a couple bars and a couple of the little coffee powders that she just puts in her mouth and eats. 
<laughs> I don't think anyone else does that, but she'll put a couple, pull a couple of these out and just like, just place them in their hands. I want to say, I mean, I know it's been a couple months, but I also want to say at one point, was it not with the Militech guys or somewhere, or maybe it was in the Brain Dance, but I want to say it was out of there. No, no. It was the people that came, uh, the Neighborhood Welcoming Committee, I believe, had a tray of muffins oh, that yeah. Hades checked. That's true. <laughs> it was yeah. Hades I apologize. I apologize to the yeah. rest of the team for bringing that up and reminding Hades that she has muffins, but she does. Oh my God. She's got a full bakery in there. No, she'll... she'll... <laughs> pull out a, a few different varieties we've got a danish and we've got i, I just assume she has muffins muffin. like a, i don't and think it needs an explanation here is <laughs> a chocolate muffin she and just gets them wherever a raspberry danish it's it's and like a superpower here is but one yeah, of these you're able to do that and uh go. yeah gregory carry the, the take them up. thank you uh, Thank you. Uh, they, they've been stealing our food and, and supplies, too, leaving us with the bare minimum of kibble that they have. I uh, really appreciate this. Oh Thank you. God. This is real food, too. This is great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. It was baked by weird housewives. <laughs> yeah, they take it and put it in their bag. And Okay, seriously, we have to get back before they, they assume anything. Uh, again, you know where to find I'm us. my wheels. It's just under that pile of rubble there. What did you say? Uh, could you keep an eye on our wheels when you're not being hassled by the, uh, by the RCR? See yeah. that, that inconspicuous pile of rubble right there? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, actually a buggy. Oh, uh, th that'll probably be fine. Uh, no one comes through here. We're, they're making us do all the work. Okay. Well, yeah. we will be back. Probably. <laughs> okay, please don't <laughs> forget not... about us, please. If we're not dead, we'll be back. As you're but, saying yeah. your goodbyes and saying that, you can tell like their their face, even without doing a human perception, like they're getting more and more desperate and like very like uh, almost pathetic. Like it's almost sad because okay, as as you're leaving, they're kind of like getting that sort of like, like, like don't forget us. Head. Like don't forget you said you would help us, right? Like please don't forget. Like I believe what Rob is saying is that you're a bad guy, Phil. <laughs> No, no, no. no. It's laying on, there's laying yeah. on thick Rob, and there's getting a whole shovel and and a backhoe. <laughs> but no, you can you can tell they're they're you know they're really desperate, and they almost have this moment where they they feel like you're gonna go off and do your gig and forget about them. Like you can tell. And you'd just be a real jerk for leaving them. <laughs> yeah, that would be a super jerk thing to do. I mean, I don't know. I, I wouldn't do that personally. I mean, neither would I. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go find this uh, this MacGuffin. <laughs> Up and over. You heard the guys. Yeah, but let's be. I cannot stress this enough. Careful with the suits. We have two patches. Yeah. Two. Okay. We go and, slow. And we go careful. I'm so guessing I can the fall twice, and the rest of like... you are out of luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got the grappling hooks, so. Oh yeah, nice. Okay. Everyone got all the gear they want, weapons, cyberdeck, yeah. nades, spider drone. Yeah, and as spider you, uh, drone, yeah, you gather up hooks. all the gear, all the equipment, start making your way up and try to make your way up towards the high ground option up on the, the top slant of the broken building. And yeah, as Rush goes, he hits the Geiger counter and kind of hearing it hit kind of on like that, that mid-level counter where like there's obvious radiation uh you know going on here um but it's uh yeah it's getting worse as you're getting deeper into it you can kind of hear it kind of picking up Aww. um but as you get up there you, you start climbing up and making your way up on the top of this rubble um and you can see where it kind of like breaks into the building and where it broke from kind of like broke from inside of another building like the whole wall kind of collapsed off of it and slid into itself into this big opening where you just see it into blackness, into darkness. You can't tell where it goes, but it, it goes down in this kind of uh, big side of the interior wall is broken up on top of the other side of this building. You can see kind of the interior of what used to be windows. You can see exposed wiring and things kind of in between as you're climbing on top of that, making your way closer to the center of the hot zone. Everyone give me an athletics check. I knew it. <laughs> Okay. Hades. What? Oh. 12 isn't that bad? 
Okay. It yeah, could be worse. Yeah. Start so climbing your way up. Yeah, you start uh, climbing your way up. Uh, and no, I didn't. Uh, PWB, you know, I saw that negative two. I'm, I'm holding on to that myself. Um, that's a GM negative two. Uh, I'm going to use that in case any type of contested thing might come up. We'll see. No. But, um, but yeah, the team starts <laughs> climbing up over this sort of half building um, wreckage. And as you're going, it's hard to keep your footing because it's at such a steep angle. Um, and, you know, you're avoiding exposed wiring every once in a while. There's like a spark and stuff. It's just a little bit sketchy, uh, to say the least. Um, as you're climbing up, um, at one moment you hear Hades scream as she kind of slides out her footing um, and, <laughs> and literally slides down this wall into the darkness what? of this building, this big open side of the building and just slides into this darkness. Um, and you can hear like some like, cock, cock, like some like some banging noises ah! and then a big splash sound of like water. Oh, and um, and and Hades, give me uh, another athletics check. Are you okay? And you took five points of We're damage, about to find out. Uh, but that is absorbed by your armor. Uh, so depending on what it's been ablated to, fifteen now. Nice. And this, I'm in the danger better. water. Yeah, and you, you you land in this darkness. You can't even see. Do you have thermal red or night vision, cyber eyes, Hades? Actually, uh, let me check. Oh, did you have eyes put in? Sweet. I I mean I have cyber eyes. Let's see what I've done with yeah, them. You, yeah, yeah, I can't remember if you have night vision or not. <laughs> You're like, I, I never... But, the, um, the package, the vision package is like IR and night vision. It's a really good package. Yeah. I thought I got some so of those. So like, there's like micro, macro, and then like various types of vision are the main three options for eyes. And targeting scope, which is what I've got. I thought I had got some, but I'm not seeing it on my thing right now, so. Maybe you got eyes, but didn't get things uh, in them. I thought somebody got see. eyes but did you get any get... packages? I, 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 I have eyes for... I have virtuality oh, just... on it. Virtuality is what you've got. Uh, to okay. yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, so look, at here's how it goes down. Uh, uh, as you're climbing up, uh, Hades loses her footing, uh, you know, failing that first athletic check, sliding down this wall of this building up just into darkness and Hades, it's terrifying because as you slide into this, it opens up into this building and it's just black. I mean, you can't see it. It's so dark. And you just fall in. You feel yourself kind of hit, you know, some rubble as you just land in a big splash. And you're just kind of wading in water. You can't feel the bottom. You're just kind of in water. You almost submerge for a second, come back up, and you're kind of wading. Whoa. And when you hit rubble, you almost broke your leg. That, that was what the second uh, D, uh, athletics check was for because you did take that little bit of damage, only five points of damage. I imagine your SP almost is enough. Almost, but didn't is what yeah, I'm hearing. Exactly, because your SP absorbs that. Uh, even a bladed, I think you're still fine. Um, but you did come close, being that 15 was the DV to beat to not break a leg. And you hit 15, it goes to the defender. So you're just lucky enough. Like, yeah, like you hit your leg, it hurts really bad, Charlie Horse style. Like, you feel like it oh. almost broke. And as that big splash happens, and all of you realize Hades just slid off into darkness, this is where we'll end our session. Yeah. <laughs> sea monsters! Sea monsters! Oh god! All the sea monsters! <laughs> I told y'all. Goodness. We're back, baby. What a good, what a good. Athletics is not for <laughs> me. It's not. Oh, worrying. I'm not running, yo. Not worrying at all that our armor keeps getting ablated. <laughs> Death tapes going up. Uh, <laughs> well, at least uh, I'm gonna die. Yeah, like a. a that's funny. Ru Rufio says the cliffhangers are back. Oh, thank you so much. I love that. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, I like uh, you know that you Let's guys at, at least played a little nice. Hades had me a little worried there with the Terra Nova, uh, with her the things that she was saying and reacting to them. But I think the re <laughs> the rest of you played nice oh, enough to I kind of make that connection happen, and you were able to at least get that sort of. You know, regardless of the sort of scratch our back yours thing, you're at least enough to 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 get some information. You're at least enough to to get those speed heals. Like, yeah, you've still mm. got slightly ablated armor. Yeah, you had to use a bunch of those 10 patches. You still have a couple patches, and you have your HP back. I think that's that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't have happened without playing nice with those guys. So um, I think that was a pretty good roleplay moment um, that at least got you kind of leveled back up. Um, only to find yourselves losing Hades into a pit of darkness and water and stuff. But, you know. She's it is, on. It, it is, and it, I think we all learned something about Phil today. Uh, <laughs> we did. Phil about has buds. no heart. About Bud. Slash... About Bud, thank oh, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> bud has no heart slash Bud hates hippies. Love there. Man. Truth Love is out. Uh, 
No, I thought it was great. Um, yeah, and I think. Uh, doesn't like clean water. In not my but... problem, Drake. <laughs> That's true. But no, I think that uh, you know, I think it was it was uh, you know, it was some good role playing and some good decision making on that. I know it's kind of in a sticky situation, and you're kind of like in the process of having to deal with one thing while trying to play nice with you know Militech trying to have your back against you know, Arasaka and trying to play nice with that. Rush has connections on both sides, and it's like you've got the evils of what happened with Arasaka to deal with, as well as, like, just trying to get this done in the middle of the hot zone. Then you run into these nomads doing some messed up stuff, had to do a little payola and get past that, a little paranoia. Are they going to take the buggy? Are they going to follow? Or what's this about? And then you see they're dealing with some slave labor with some techs just trying to do some good to the hot zone and for the city. Now they were able to help you out a little. It just... Once again, I just love how the role playing kind of um, I don't know ampl amplified the um, the sort of turmoil or the sort of like um, I don't know the 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 moral dilemmas and decision making and like well do do we do this now or this now or that after or are we pressed for time or like I don't know I just I, I love the pressure that that not only <laughs> I'm presenting with different situations but that you guys kind of create within the story. It's just so good the role playing and the the decision making. I don't know. I'm loving it. And uh, I'm just happy to be back and right in the yeah. thick of it with all of you, <laughs> yeah. to say the yeah. least. Um, and yeah, <laughs> thanks chat for contributing too. I, I see all those, um, you know, plus twos, even giving me a negative two and, and just being part of the story right away, helping, helping the team kind of get through it. So very cool. Uh, Rufio. So glad the team is back in action. Such a good sesh. Thank you so much. Um, Sirenscape merch, you can buy our faces. We're on a t shirt oh, yeah. and or hoodie. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. Check out that I link. Think mine is in the post. Uh, so, yeah, that is us. That's yeah, right us there. on merch. If you like it, so you want to support Sirenscape in a way other than getting the program, which you should absolutely do, oh, yeah. get the merch as well. Super cool. That was done. That was d done by Rocket. Amazing. Hell yeah. Here we all look. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, and the link's right there in chat. we got a couple links to the merch. Definitely support that. Also, make sure, like Phil said, that you're trying out Sirenscape. It's the reason we're here every week. We love all of you tuning in for the gameplay, but don't forget that Sirenscape is an amazing tool that you too can use for your gameplay, whether you're a player or a GM. If you're a player, tell the GM about it. Sign up, get that free trial, and bring it to the table. Bring it to your gameplay and show the other players in GM. Or if you're the GM, grab that. Show your players how immersive you can make the gameplay. It's just awesome. Um, you see how we Fantasy use it. Fantasy sounds sets oh yeah cyberpunk cthulhu and little triggers uh, there's all kinds of stuff all kinds of little things like even if they don't have the official licensed sound set for the game you're playing you can find things and create your own sets that will work with whatever game you're playing it's so good um but yeah Load your own sounds in there amazing good stuff exactly but hey yeah we're back we're gonna be here every thursday same place same time so make sure you tune in uh yeah we'll see you next time thanks so much take care goodbye bye, bye.